just take a moment and enjoy the beauty of this mod pack because it's insane. This mod pack has struck a sort of sentimental chord with me in a very unexplainable but pleasant way. From taking your time to dig up old fossils, to fighting an ultra wither and an old sea legend, this pack really has it all. Your journey will hold many dangers, although for us it means going at it with your style and making a list of mobs we had to hunt. We had to fight the Blaze King, the Ultra Wither, a giant, the Sanctum Keep, and last but not least, the Shulker Stone. All of these fights look amazing, and each of these mobs also drop incredible incredible prizes when you slay them. So we're talking about a Blaze King helmet, a Shulker helmet, Spirit Bow, Corrupted Dust, Enchanted Cores and Giant Stompers. Like what is all this stuff? It's so cool. With all the amazing loot, you can really deck your character out. This collector's feeling is even further enhanced by all the different artifacts you can get. I mean, just look at all this stuff. One of the really cool things about this mod pack is the enhanced first and third person camera movement. Like, some of you are gonna get motion sick, like, I hope you don't throw up during this video. But come on, look at this. It gets me so immersed in this magical world of Symbolica. It was like nothing I've ever played before. But be aware when you go to sleep because some surprises are waiting for you right next to your bed oh yeah and before we jump straight into day one there is one final boss we have to talk about one that will literally have you shaken in your boots <laughs> cold joke oh my god nice captain cornelia is gonna make me look like a white-haired dude in chapter 236 Oh man, I'm gonna get so much crap for making that joke. And on that note, we head straight into day one. <laughs> I was ready to do some clapping, but before I was gonna be able to do some clapping, I was first going to get clapped, because after RL Craft, I thought I was done with dying in hardcore, but oh boy. <laughs> I guess I was really wrong, huh? Let's take a look at the compilation of me dying. So I found this chest on day 8. And yeah, well, the rest speaks for itself. After a little while, I got trapped with no food, and I blocked myself in. I guess spiders can do that. Then I found a trident throwing guy on day 3, and I thought I could claim an easy trident. Yeah, well, nothing was really easy about this endeavor. This guy was throwing straight fire. I got killed by some guy behind me using magic. After that on day 2, I found this iron golem trapped in a vindicator place. Now, I thought I could free this guy and have him help me kill the mobs. So I mined all of the gates and... Yeah... After that on day 21, I had gotten myself with full diamond gear I'd gotten a ton of enchanted stuff, and I was doing good. I found this warden place, and he didn't like me stealing his stuff. So I got obliterated by a sonically charged shriek. So yeah, I had a fun time trying to get a world going, to be honest. And we were in day one. Achievement gotten better end. Day one had started. Now, I had a little bit of experience with the mod pack by now, so I knew kind of what I was doing. When I say kind of, I know up until day, up until day 20, pretty much. 
So I claimed the first couple of chests in this village and there were a couple things that I needed to do. I needed to rush logs, I needed to rush some string, I needed to rush some wool, I needed to get a ton of iron, but first I made a set of wooden tools because all worlds pretty much start the same. You get a wooden tools, you get your stone, you upgrade to your stone tools and then you can start the world pretty much. So. One of the things you see me do here is I get a ton of white wool and we need this to make sails. Now, why would I make a sail, you might ask? Well, there are flying machines in this mod pack and flying machines allow you to have flight on day one. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? So we needed two sails, we needed two hulls, which pretty much costs about six iron and 12 logs. And then we can make a flying machine. First, I got some extra bookshelves, I raided the local library, I killed some of the cows, as you saw, and I claimed my first iron. Now we needed a lot of iron, so we first got a ton of iron. After all that iron mining, I needed coal, and man, just look how thick these veins are. These veins are as thick as Sam Sulik on his cut. If you guys aren't watching Sam Sulik yet and you hit the gym, man, go watch that guy. He is hilarious. He's really fun. He's one of us. After that, I found a villager outpost. I was definitely not ready to take these guys on because I was rocking a wooden sword and no armor. But that didn't stop me from stealing all of their stuff. I just blocked the guys off and they could not get to me. Oh yeah, bring me all the loot, man. I looted the top floor of this villager outpost. And as you see right there, I got the advancements for acquiring hardware. Now I was hoping, because we hit the end of the day, that I had enough stuff to make the flying machine. So I needed to plunk down a furnace and I needed to go ahead and get started on that iron smelting. I made my first sales and we were in business. Now I needed to smelt enough iron, which I had, and I needed to make my hulls and my propeller. Those are the only five items I need. So I needed a little bit more iron, needed one more iron ingot, and I could make the propeller. The hulls were made, and I could assemble everything and take to the skies on day one. How sick is that? So I put the two sails in, I got the two hulls, I put them in as well, and there we go. Oh wait, I have to switch them around. There we go, we have the gyro, gyrocopter, I think it's called. I'm probably gonna butcher that name. It is called the Gyrodyne? Gyrodyne, it's a Gyrodyne. And there we go, we took off. Minimum rotor speed reached, and there we go. We are flying through the skies on day one. Now, there is one structure that I really want to find. And I really want to set my base up in. But first I was going to use this time to find a couple of villages. Because there are like blacksmiths inside the village. And they hold some really good stuff. They also hold some nice furnaces. Well, blast furnaces pretty much. And they're quite expensive to make actually. So I just claimed both of those. I took all of the villager tool stations that were inside of these because we are going to make a village trading hall really soon into this mod pack. Now I got some iron stuff, I got a diamond, and I also got some obsidian. So we were pretty much balling on day one. Like I'm not gonna lie, this is like a really, really good start. As you can see in my inventory, I also claimed a ton of beds from this place because when you make a villager trading hall, you need beds. I flew through the night sky on my gyrodyne and I got too hungry to fly. So I needed to eat a couple pieces of bread and we were good to go again. Now, as you can see here, you can claim the bounty board. Now, the bounty board is something new. I haven't seen it yet. Pretty much it acts like a villager, but it's like a station. I and mean, you can take these bounty boards with you. And that's when I found this thing. That is a weeping angel statue. And as you can see, it does a lot of damage, but it can only be damaged by a pickaxe. So yeah, these things are pretty scary. Because also, when one of those angels touches you, they have a chance to teleport you at a random location. So you can you you can have some pretty funny situations happen. We're gonna get we're gonna get fucked over by them as well. You'll you'll see it happen. Don't worry about it. 
After flying around for a while, I actually found my structure that I wanted to house in on day 2. And look at that, that's a giant ice tower right next to it. I haven't seen one of those yet. So I wanted to set a base, but that tower took and piqued my interest, man. I wanted to see what was up with that first. So we flew over to the tower, and little did I know, I was going to get scammed at this tower. I'm, I was going to get scammed, man, like completely scammed. So I land on the tower, and I check the barrel, and look at this. Efficiency 2 diamond pickaxe, unbreaking and power book, mending book, oh my god, that's nasty. Yo, distance punch and fast spin, that's kind of I, but there's also two diamond ore inside of it. And oh my god, if that is what I think it is, that's a netherite helmet right there. Huh. <laughs> we are golden we're gonna conquer this world and it's gonna mean nothing to me all right let's do this let's take that helmet all right, all right i need to free up some space okay okay all right there we go netherite helmet acquired look at wait curse of binding speed curse of binding doesn't matter i mean it's a pro 3 netherite helmet wait why am i why is my armor bar so low I'm wearing almost full iron and a netherite helm. Oh no. Oh no. Um I think it doesn't count as armor, this helmet. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're stuck with an unbreaking three netherite helmet that doesn't add armor that I need to break somehow. <laughs> okay, we got scammed. Alright, I found my place of residence. I'm going to set a base in this kingdom. This will be the place where I become the king of my world. Oh yeah. I had this mighty feeling, man. Look at all that obsidian. Oh, that's juicy. Alright, we also have an anvil that's right outside our base, which is awesome. So I took that anvil inside and I freed up some space. Now, I wanted to get like... Like, how do you say it? Like a nice baseline floor where I set up all my chests, my auto smelter, all that good stuff. I also needed to get a ton of wood in order to make those chests. And I started my chest monster. Now, before you guys go screaming in the comments, no, there is no simple storage mod in this mod pack. So, chest monster it is. We're just gonna vibe with it. I used my last remaining planks to make a couple more chests and I started organizing them. And everything was looking pretty neat, I gotta say. And there we go, in a realm where imagination knows no bounds, where creativity and courage converge, a new adventure begins. Welcome to a world where the limits of possibility are stretched beyond imagination, a place where the boundaries between reality and myth blur into something extraordinary. Welcome to the world of Symbolica. I gotta say, that's a pretty sick intro to the mod pack. Now, I know there is a whole questline system, but it's not really that advanced, so I'm just skipping over that part. We're going straight to bed. Now, a little disclaimer for those who are playing this mod pack, normally you don't go to sleep immediately, but you have to wait like a certain while, but that just prolonged the video unnecessarily, so I meant it to the mod config and I made it so that sleeping is instantaneous. So, just a quick... TLDR on that one. If you want to change it, just go into the mod config and then just put the sleep immediately to true. It's gonna make it a lot easier for me to make this spawn pack because otherwise, during the first recordings, the footage was like twice as long, which was crazy. All right, we woke up on day three. We were hungry. We ate some food and we went straight to mining logs, chopping logs actually, because we needed a ton of wood for one sole reason. I had a fletching bounty board set up and I was going to make a fletcher trading hall because those guys can give you, with two of them, a stack of diamonds easily each day, which is a stack of diamonds. What am I saying? A stack of emeralds each day. That's going to allow us to trade with other villagers to get a ton of diamond gear and weaponry and tools early into this mod pack. It's going to be amazing, trust me. I stole a lot of beds outside of the houses of my own village. And look at that, that spider is acting like Spider-Man. God damn. And these things look creepy. 
Ah, oh, they even roll and die like a real spider. That's that's ungodly. Oh my god. So back at home after my spider adventure i started building my first villager trading hall we were we were skipping none of the good stuff we were going straight into the villager trading hall i made a small encampment which i was going to get my villagers into using my flying machine i killed another weeping angel because these things just look creepy as hell and i placed some ladders in order to get inside of my trading hall now, if I use a trap door and I close all of it off, it's going to be easy. The villagers are going to be safe and it's going to be good stuff. I placed a couple of chests down in order to have all the excess materials to place in there. And I placed my bounty boards down. Now, these bounty boards are decided by their decree what kind of trades they will have. So for now, I have a toolsmithing decree in that one bounty board. So I'll have some trades that correlate to that one. I also placed a couple of torches in order to keep my villagers safe and warm during the night. Two fletching tables down and we were just missing the villagers pretty much. So I took to the skies after glitching a little bit into this flying machine and we were on the hunt to get some villagers. We're gonna steal everybody! Hide your kids, hide your wives, we'd be stealing everybody out here. I did find another one of these ice towers. So I was hoping for some good stuff. And yeah, like my fear confirmed, it doesn't show any armor value. So those helmets are... Well, they're not just cursed. They're completely, absolutely cursed. I did get another diamond, another diamond ore, aqua affinity, loading one, and a power three protection three book, which is pretty big. Those enchantments are really strong on day three. I did find a village. So we were going to steal some villagers. Oh yeah, this priest, you're standing no chance. You're coming home with me. Oh yeah. You can moan and complain all you want, but you're gonna start trading sticks for emeralds for me, man. From sticks to riches. That is the motto of this trading hall. Back at home, I got the villager inside of the trading hall and he was showing some particles, which was really weird. And I got him outside of the flying machine. Now, this is a really easy way to get villagers inside of a designated space. Like, man, if you remember from Rad 2, we had to take, like, a minecart and rails, and we had to spend so much resources trying to get those villagers inside the trading hall. But, luckily for me, I didn't have to deal with any of that. I just got some good stuff. Back at home, I got a couple of trades from my bounty board because you can also increase levels on the bounty board, which I think is a pretty cool system. You can do trades, increase your reputation on the bounty board, and get discounts. I was really wondering how far the discounts go. And also, one of the things I learned from the Fletching Bounty Board is that you can get trades for Infinity Bows. Oh yeah, we're gonna rush getting an Infinity Bow in like the first 10 days. Just watch me. I then placed my gyrodyne, gyrodyne, that's the right word, gyrodyne down, and I upgraded it with a air resistant propeller, which I thought was going to increase its speed. Now you need quite a big runway to launch with this gyrodyne, <laughs> and I was really struggling trying to take off with this thing inside of my face. It was just not working. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my dumbass trying to lift off, hitting every single wall in my base. Oh my god. What am I even doing? I did spend another night getting to another village, and I got this farmer with me. Now, well, fisherman. I, I thought it was, it looks like a farmer, but it's a fisherman. I didn't realize that you can, well, get these villagers to become unemployed after you destroy their original blocks. So I either had to swap them with other villagers or I had to destroy their original block. But I did not know that at the time. So I thought they just needed some time and then they would become my fletching villagers. I also didn't realize that I took a nitwit with me. And if you don't know what a nitwit is, this guy can never learn any trades. Yeah, this guy is just gonna yeah, be a nitwit. <laughs> I mean, there's not much else to say. I placed some extra beds down and I was feeling like this villager trading hall was finally coming to 
it was finally starting to look like something. I did take the nitwit back to his village though, because he was not going to be useful to me. In the village, I started destroying every single block that I could find that had some trades attached to it, because I wanted as much unemployed villagers as possible and it started to look good. I claimed my first unemployed villager in my gyrodyne, and after glitching a little bit into my gyrodyne, I took off to the skies. This guy was coming home with me. Oh yeah, there we go. We got the unemployed villager inside of my base, and I wanted him to become a Fletcher. Some accidents occurred with the already learned trades of the villagers. Accidents can always happen, am I right? Like this, it's just an unfortunate accident. There is nothing more to it. Don't look at me like that. I did get another unemployed villager and he was going to replace the accidents. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds so sinister, oh my god. And my first villager got a fletching trade. So there we go, we had our first fletching villager and come on, have a stick trade my guy. Let's go, we're in the money. This guy trades sticks, oh yeah, that's big. So I got a couple of sticks already in my inventory and I was going to start trading because trading also gives you experience, which means that the moment we get diamond stuff, we are going to be able to do level 30 enchants. And just look at that. It gives me almost half a level each time I trade. That's so big. I also maxed out their first trade from novice till the next level and I had gotten 40 emeralds, 42, 44, well 43 emeralds we stayed at. I then traded all of my emeralds for bows because I also wanted to max out the trades on my villagers because these guys can also have enchanted bows with some pretty powerful enchantments if I dare say so myself. After that I stored away all the stuff, I closed the gap in my trading hall and I placed a trap door. Now nothing could get inside, nothing could spawn inside and we were good. Out in the open, I did some monster hunting because I ran out of sticks and I needed to farm some more wood. Now the way I could do this was using four spruce saplings, I could bone meal those inside of my base and I could mine them throughout the night, which would save me some time as well. Now that weeping angel you just saw, yeah he teleported me to some random unknown place. And I gotta say, he teleported me like 400 blocks away from my base, which was kinda scary. But luckily for me, I had my flying machine in my inventory and I could get home easily. I then used my bone meal and I bone mealed these trees. Look at that, just like that, I had 73 logs sitting in my backyard. Which I immediately chopped down, of course. It does take a time, it, it takes quite a while actually. But seeing that tree fall down, you gotta admit, it's really satisfying. I claimed all of the logs and I made another tree, which I mined, another one, and another one. And I had a good amount of logs. I did do one more for good measure, and my game almost crashed. When I loaded back into the game, we were iced, the tree was falling down, and we got all of the logs. I then scoured my bounty board for some more easy trades, and there were quite a bit of normal plank trades, which were awesome. Had some plank and stick trades, so I claimed all of the bounties that I could, that I could easily turn in. This was going to boost my chance to get the infinity bow. I'm telling you, I'm looking out for that one. That's gonna be good. I also got a rare trade, and when I claimed it, I got a trident. So, really early into the mod pack, we get a trident. I just gotta find some loyalty, and then it's gonna be an insane weapon. I claimed all of the bounties that I had taken out of the bounty board, and look at that, we were on level 5 with a decent discount, actually. One of the things that I like to do in mod packs is I'm kind of a completionist. So, I, when I see levels and experience and, like, reputation, I always want to max it out. For now, I did make that power 2 bow and I crafted a ton more sticks, which I then went for trading and we got a ton of emeralds and a ton of levels. We were already up to level 17 almost, so that was awesome. All the remaining sticks I put in the chest right next to it and I was ready to rock and roll. I needed to claim a couple more villagers, however. 
because as you know I need a smithing table a grindstone and there's one more yeah there's one more oh yeah if we use a blast furnace we probably get the armor because I wanted to get a full diamond set before day 10 is it possible I'm not entirely sure but what's stopping us from trying nothing really so during the night time I claimed well, I didn't really claim. I made my villager trading post for all of my diamond stuff. I needed to get quite a bit of villagers inside of this trading hall, however. It was going to take quite a bit of time. I did check my other bounty boards, and there it is. The infinity bow. 36 planks, and I could get an infinity bow. And another decree as well, which is pretty insane. That's like an awesome trade. So I went outside, I immediately chopped down a tree, I got the planks for the trade, and I turned it in. Infinity Bow acquired! Look at that. I combined it with my power too, immediately of course. And there we go. We had another decree, it was shepherding. We put it inside, and our bounty boards were starting to look pretty beefy. I gotta admit. I slept the night away, and I wanted to see if I could get some more trades going. First, I did my stick trade because, as you know, every morning the trades refresh. So that means I can claim a full stack of emeralds every morning almost. I then spent all of the emeralds on getting the expert trade up to masterful, and I had these two bows that I claimed. Now, these bows have them breaking. I think I'm breaking three and power three. No, power two, I'm breaking two. I can combine those with nine levels. And then I would need 21 levels to combine it with the infinity. So for now, I just rocked with the I'm breaking three power three bow because that's actually quite a strong bow. I got another villager, and he was going to become my very first toolsmith, weaponsmith, or armorer. I did crash my flying machine, and this guy started running for his life. He went to the first block that he could find and he became a farmer, but that was not stopping me. I destroyed the farmer's barrel. I kept glitching, so I couldn't take him to, <laughs> to my other trading post, but that was no problem. I would just mine a couple of blocks and then I could get into the flying machine. First villager acquired. Now come on, pick your trade, man. There's three grindstones. What are you waiting for? Why are you shrugging your arms like that? Dude, get a trade! I need me some diamond stuff, man! Oh my god, you trade an iron sword of a fast spin for 12 emeralds! Are you kidding me? Nah, you're getting a different trade. Let's put those smithing tables down. I want to get some tools first. Okay. That's a stone trade first. That's okay. One emerald for a stone pickaxe. It's fine. It's fine. We can deal with that. I got a ton of emeralds out of my chest and I made him level up to the next level. And his next level was pretty expensive. I either had to get a ton of iron or I needed to trade like 8 or 10 bells, but that's like 5 stacks of emeralds. I'm not dealing with that. Come on, man. Why are you trying to scam me like that? Got another villager, placed him inside the village trading hall and he went straight to bed. What a lazy ass. I need you to get some trades, my homeboy. I need you to get me some trades. And that's when a rare mob captain showed up and he spawned right outside. Normally these guys spawn like underground so there's no real way to get to them. But this guy was above ground. As you can see the fire indicates where the mob will spawn. Now these mobs, these mob captains can drop some pretty crazy gear. So I wanted to take this creeper down as fast as possible. Luckily I had that power bow which was really coming in clutch. After I killed the mob captain creeper, I got Mjolnir. Now, I thought this was gonna be like sharp 10 axe or something crazy like that, but it was just a smite 5 iron axe. It was, it was, I, it's a pretty cool gimmick, but it's not really that useful to me. However, I think if I kill a legendary captain, those things are gonna be pretty useful. I placed another bed down and I got another villager. The next day, I also got another villager. And I kept trading all of my emeralds for tools. Because we were rushing that diamond stuff. As well as with the armor, I needed to rush his trades. Because diamond armor was going to go a long way. I had some trades for the iron boots here. Which only cost four emeralds. I thought that was a fair deal. 
So I use that trait to level him up to from novice to I think it's intermediate or expert. No, apprentice. I leveled him up to apprentice and I got a chainmail trait, which was really cheap and it gives a lot of experience. So this guy was the goat. He was going to get me my diamond gear as fast as I possibly could. I then stored all of my excess materials and armor away and I got and fetched another villager. I was I was absolutely raiding these villages. There were some villages didn't even have any villagers left anymore. I got so many villagers inside my trading hall that I felt that I had well I had enough villagers, right? At this point. I then did some more stick trading and I actually got a, a discount on the sticks. I, I had to trade one stick less, which was awesome. I then did the chainmail trades and I was hoping to get diamond after this trade. And another chainmail trade, but the discount was huge. At this point, it took only took one emerald to trade, which was it was amazing. The iron chest plate was still really expensive. And look at that. We are in the money. We got prot two diamond boots and we got some fire protection diamond leggings. So Man, if that netherite helmet would have been a real helmet, I would have been so beefy already right now. But, nonetheless, I made an enchanting table because I was ready to get into level 30 enchantments really soon. My, We were at level 21. Level 21. So I had to put it on the bucket list to get some bookshelves ASAP. My steak got done cooking and we were going to have a gourmet meal. I also got four leather and four string ready. I just needed four more wool and then I could make a backpack as well. That was gonna increase our productivity when we are out exploring. And just like that, we flew inside this giant mine shaft. These cave systems are absolutely beautiful. Now, it's really awesome that I can just fly out and I needed to gather a ton of iron for those iron trades. So that's exactly what I did throughout the night. And I spent a really long time in the mines actually, but I was having a good time. I had some lo-fi on, the mines were looking absolutely gorgeous. It was just a really chill, relaxed vibe session to be honest. I also found some extra gold and some extra lapis, although it wasn't that much, but I was really on the lookout for some diamonds to make some unenchanted diamond gear. Because from my knowledge, all the, all the stuff you get from the villagers is already enchanted. And that's when I found my first normal diamond. Look at that. We were in the money. I also found this weird structure inside of the mines with a couple of rag chests and whoa. Whoa! That's a big book. Ooh, I can make a really good diamond axe with that one. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. Cause I need a strong axe to farm all the wood that I need for stick trading. And ooh, look at that. There's more diamonds over there. Will that be enough to make my diamond axe? I wonder. Oh, we're in the money. That's it. I needed three diamonds to be exact, and we got three during this session. Get on my flying machine, and let's get the hell out of here. You gotta admit, this pack looks, looks absolutely gorgeous. I mined my way up, and I was met with yet another stunning view. Just look at that. It's amazing. I had to take a screenshot. Come on, man. This is this is such an awesome pack. It's so relaxed. It's vibing. It's awesome. We're gonna get into some really cool boss fights and some mob hunting later in the mod pack, though. As well as there is a really cool, really cool thing that's called an Ultra Wither. And yeah, you already know we gotta kill that thing. So for now, at home, I took the special book and I was going to place it onto my diamond axe. Look at that axe. It also has sharpness, so it can be a weapon if I need to as well. I immediately wanted to go and try out this axe on some trees. And this tree has 89 logs. And look at how fast it is mining that tree. While chopping that tree. But oh my god! That is so satisfying. That is so satisfying. So I spent the rest of the day mining all of the trees inside and I was felling this forest like a real lumberjack. So you can call me Elabro the Lumberjack. Oh yeah, just give me a beard, give me an axe and some like red coveralls and man, I got the whole vibe going. And look at all the logs I got. 
So I turned all the logs into planks, I stored them in a chest, and I would, was gonna take them out whenever I needed to do my stick trading. And it's almost a full double chest, filled with these planks. So I immediately got started on crafting these sticks, and it took quite a while to craft the sticks, but it was so worth it, because I started trading, and I got so many emeralds again. I'm really living the trader's dream right now. Got all my villagers set up, it's awesome. The first part of the day was spent getting all of my sticks set up. I chopped so much wood that I needed a ton of sticks. I immediately got my emeralds to get working on this armor and we got protection 2, diamond helmet and a diamond chest plate. This was big. We pretty much had access to full, almost full, prop 2 diamond gear. Now I had some spare emeralds. But first, I had to appreciate the drip. I mean, you can see the blinging of my armor, which is pretty cool. I went back inside and I spent the rest of my emeralds on trading with the toolsmith in order to unlock the tools, the diamond tools. I did do some money laundering, turning sticks into emeralds, which I don't think is FDA approved. But anyway, I made a prop 3 diamond chest plate, which was banging. I also upgraded my armor using emeralds, so now I had emerald inlaid sentry diamond armor. And you gotta appreciate it, I look pretty fly in this suit man, come on, look at this. That's pretty fly. I then spent some time flying around in my quadcopter and a rare mob captain showed up. Now, normally these guys spawn underground, but I saw where the beam was, so I immediately went underground. And it was, lo and behold, another creeper. Now, luckily for me, I had a strong bow and I was able to kill him fast. Now, for the loot, I got a YOLO. YOLO! I feel like I'm back in 2016 when this thing started happening. But yeah, it has Curse of Vanaging. So, I don't think this thing is gonna save me from dying, man. I'm skipping on using this one. I then spent some time flying around again. And I located this cool structure. There were a ton of sheep outside and I wanted to, well, pretty much get some extra wool in order to make my backpacks. I did have to fend for my life as the zombies were trying to rip my face off and I mined all of these coal blocks. There's just, there's 14 coal blocks laying around, there was like 16 copper blocks and some more coal blocks. So this was a big haul. I got enough fuel to last me for years, man. I also located this flying... How do you say it? Like an island? Like a land? It was pretty cool. There were random diamonds on the surface as well. So, we were in for the big money on this island. Now, sadly for me, I had to fend for my life again, as the mobs kept just pouring in on this sky island. But, the diamonds were everywhere. And I quickly gathered two diamonds before I left this place, because I didn't want to get overrun by mobs. Back at home, I stored my YOLO away, and I got to work on the backpack. That was definitely one of the things I really had to make. Now, there is a cool thing where you can upgrade your backpacks as well. So I made the small backpack and I upgraded it to a medium. Now, guys, this medium backpack is fire. It is straight fire. It's, it almost has the capacity of a double chest. If it's not a double, it is the capacity of a double chest. So I'm carrying pretty much a double chest on my back. Which I mean, that's kind of baller. That's kind of baller. I did still have the issue of the netherite helmet. And you see me taking a screenshot because I texted it to the mod, to, to the guys that created the mod. And I was asking around like, is this a bug or did I just get scammed? And well, yeah, scammer gets scammed. It's not a bug. I just got fucked over. So I spent my time sulking in the money that I got from trading, trying to gamble my depression away. Again, that's not life advice. Please don't do that. <laughs> I spent all of my emeralds on diamond hose, which is also not good life advice. And I upped the trades of my tools. I had a ton of extra obsidian laying around, so I wanted to get started on making that nether portal as well. And I could make a pretty big nether portal with all of this obsidian, so I thought let's just make it big. Make it big, if you know what I'm saying, a big portal. And if everything in this mod pack is as beautiful as all the rest looks, which I 
I don't doubt it will, then this portal is gonna look insane. I grab the flint and steel, I place some torches down, and I light the portal, and oh my god. Oh my god. That looks super trippy, but it's really cool. So, of course, you know, I had to take a screenshot of this stuff. This is just awesome! I also spent some time looking around for bookshelves in my village because I wanted to do some level 30 enchants. We were creeping up on level 25. We just hit level 24. And, of course, there's another weeping angel right outside this house. Stop flailing your arms around. I'm not going to give you a hug. And I made some extra bookshelves because now we could set up a level 30 enchanting table and we could finally go for that fortune. Because fortune works on iron, and as you saw, we have a lot of iron trades, so I need to get tons and tons of iron. I decorated it moderately, noobishly, and I wanted to see if I could make a level 30 enchant with this setup. So I put a book inside the enchanting table, but I was still out of luck. It was level 24, which is exactly the levels that I have right now, but not enough for level 30. So I added five more shelves, and just like that, we were in the money. We were able to make level 30 enchants. So that was a good thing. I also went to the observatorium right outside my village training hall. And I made that the designated spot for my librarians that I wanted to get. Because as you know, mending you can get from librarians. And if we're pretty lucky, the first couple of librarians might hold a mending book. Which would upgrade our world to the next level. It would be amazing to have mending. I opened up a hole right outside of my Hubble telescope and I was ready to fly some villagers in through that hole. I did however need to set up the trap door, which I was going to do now, and then I could spend some more time money laundering because as you know, tax evasion goes hard and we make these sticks into pure emeralds. Got a stack of money on me and was going to blow it on the other villagers that had. Give me them diamond hoes, give me them enchanted iron axes. I want all of your stuff. And we're waiting on the level up. Look at that. A diamond shovel. Are you kidding? Come on, man. Give me like a fortune three or something. Give me some good stuff. I should have hit the black market instead of this place, actually. Nonetheless, I was feeling pretty good and I spent the remaining emeralds on some more random trades of stone tools in order to raise the level a little bit. But we were making steady progress and all of my villagers were almost at masterful level. I also took out one of the banners from my house because if you right click a banner with your atlas, you can put a waystone, a waypoint on your atlas. That's what I wanted to do in the nether to not lose track of my portal. But the first time visiting the nether didn't go really as planned because when I tried right clicking that banner, it didn't make a waypoint. And for some reason my character icon was freaking out. And that's when disaster struck man, cause I got teleported to the shadow realm. One of these weeping angels got a hold of me, hugged me and said bye bye good night. Teleported me like a thousand blocks away from my house. Luckily for me, I had my helicopter in my inventory and I could make my way back home pretty easily. I made a quick stop at this villager's house, stole all of his wheat, turned it into bread, and we were slaying mobs again. It was going pretty good. I always needed more string and bones in order to get more trees and to get more backpack upgrades. And you never get tired of seeing these beautiful night lights when you're flying out. Like, I've never seen any night lights or northern lights like this ever and as you see we almost hit level 30 so i wanted to get this enchanting process going i was feeling good we were gonna hit fortune on the first enchantment try look at this scene don't tell me you don't get happy from looking at like lapis floating around the enchanting table like that it just looks awesome so back in the nether i wanted to get a quick two levels in order to do some level 30 enchantments I tried doing the waystone again, like the waypoint again, didn't work, got attacked by a weeping angel and returned some vengeance on his ass, and I got just enough levels to do the level 30 enchant. So thank you weeping angel, you gave me a hug and I gave one right back. So we are back at the base, ready to enchant level 30. It says efficiency 3, but it's gonna give me- four. didn't give me fortune, who am I lying to? Ah, we need another level 30 enchant. But we were out in the open, chopping trees again. Because of course we ran out of sticks already. <laughs> but 
But I spent a really long time chopping down trees and I got a pretty good two, two rows of stacks of logs. Like this was going to net us a good amount of sticks. I continued chopping down trees a little bit longer during the night time and I finally got around to making all the sticks. This took a while to make, man. Like, <laughs> I... I really wish there was some kind of like auto crafting feature because man turning planks into sticks like this takes so long but it's all worth it because look at the experience I get from trading. From just one trading session we went from level 27 to 28 and almost 29. Checked on the bounty board but there was no real good bounties anymore so I went back to the stick trading to get another level 30 and we just made it in time. So I combined two of my half broken pickaxes to get a clean pickaxe chuck that bad boy in and i got efficiency four and breaking three which is not fortune i know but it's a good upgrade from my efficiency three i spent the remaining of my emeralds on all kinds of different tools in order to unlock some new traits for this toolsmith i also got the second toolsmith up to masterful and i was ready to get that fortune pickaxe in his trades I was feeling good, I was feeling stoked, and this guy has a fish. <laughs> I did do some time shadow boxing my demons and my sleep paralysis demon, because man, what are those trades? I did spend my sadness trading away, getting more money, which actually did do the trick, and I was feeling stoked again. I got around to trading some more with the weaponsmith, but man, the weaponsmith is expensive takes like 10 or 12 emeralds for one item and I can only trade three times a day. Did put loyalty on the trident and it's pretty cool. I've never really used the trident in any of my playthroughs but this thing feels pretty pretty strong like I feel like chucking a full-on trident does a lot of damage right? It only did 40% to an unarmored skeleton. What? What enchantments am I supposed to put on a trident? I don't even know. I gotta figure that stuff out because it's kind of fun walking around with a trident that comes back to your hand. I also did do some scouting in the Not Enough Items mod to see what kind of weaponry and armory there is available. Now, one of the things is I found the Aetherium Axe and this thing is pretty hefty, deals 10.5 hearts of damage, but I didn't count until I found this. This is a terrible helmet, it is sea wolf armor, so it gives a class bonus to sea wolf weaponry. Now this thing has 5 armor points. The Aetherium, or Aetherium, man I'm completely butchering the names today. The other stuff only has 4 and that's like end game stuff. So this terrible helmet is really strong. The only problem being that my helmet slot is currently being used by that cursed netherite helmet so i needed to figure out a way how to get rid of that helmet because all of this stuff from aqua mirai looks so cool like they have different effects they have class bonuses it's really sick first i needed to spend some time in the mines getting some extra diamonds in order to be able to get some clean diamond tools that i can enchant with level 30. that in itself was a success we got around to four more diamonds and some other random materials. We also got an ender pearl, which is kind of big as endermen don't seem to spawn that often and I couldn't find ender pearls anywhere in the world. Well, beside that, that one, but that was also from an enderman kill. I did make a diamond brush, however. Now you might be wondering, what's a diamond brush for? That is for the archeology span mod pack. Now, if you dig up some old fossils, you can actually get some pretty crazy enchanted books. And there's two different totems. It's not like a totem of undying, but they got their own values. So we'll get around to that later in the mod pack. First, I had to appreciate this beauty. And of course, you know, I had to take a screenshot. Maybe I'll do like a slideshow of all the screenshots I took at the end of the video. That might be something cool. I did, however, get another 30 levels and I had a clean pickaxe. And look at that, boom, that's fortune three, baby. That's in the bag, we got our, ah, oh, ah, oh, man, that makes me happy. Yeah, fortune three in the bag. I did do some flying around on day 17 and I actually got around to finding an ice maze biome. And it was pretty close to home as well, which was pretty awesome. But 
These ice mazes are the biome that the Aqua Mirai mod takes place in. So this is the place where Captain Cornelia had a whole ordeal happen. First we had to locate this pirate ship. Now on this pirate ship, one of the Vindicators is holding the horn to summon Cornelia. But you gotta be careful, even though we're in diamond protection armor, we don't have a helmet, so these guys with their iron axe are gonna deal some hefty damage to us. I did snipe down a couple of them out, out of my helicopter with my bow, but this guy managed to sneak up on me. And yeah, he deals oosh, he deals three and a half hearts of damage each time he hits me. Took my bow out, he took one shot to the dome and said good night, sleep tight. And then I needed to hunt for some of these angler fish. Like the weird fish with the big teeth you see in the water, those are angler fish. They drop the necessary items to make that terrible helmet that we were talking about earlier. And man, the drop rates are pretty insane on this thing. It, it, it drops a rare item, which is the angler's fang. So we needed Finn's iron and angler's fang. So first, I took my trident out. Did get stuck in ice for some reason, which is pretty scary. I'm gonna lose some stuff here. And I started shooting it down. But this thing was moving mad fast, like this. Look, look at this thing scurrying around like it's Tokyo Drift. What are you doing, man? Come here, let me slap your ass. There we go. So, he dropped the fins, but no angler fang. So I'm guessing it's not a guaranteed drop. It's a pretty rare drop. Had a different color of the item as well and everything. So, I'm thinking I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time killing these fishes. And they're actually quite sturdy. They're not sturdy with it, but they're quite sturdy, if you know what I mean. Did do some spear fishing and I got the first drop. This is pretty lucky actually. I got a first angler's fang. And to make the terrible helmet, we only need two. Also, why is that bad omen effect an hour and 37 minutes? What the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty wild. So the rest of the day, I pretty much spent spear fishing until I would find another angler's fang. And it took, it took quite a while actually. I killed a lot of fishes. But nonetheless, this last fish, Gave me the money. That's the second angler's fang that I needed. Now I did want to also find the horn of Cornelia first. Because I was here anyway. And otherwise it would take me some time to get back. So I needed to take this one step at a time. I sniped down all of the in vindicators. Not villagers. Vindicators that were inside of the captain's hut. And I got the shell horn. That is the horn that summons Cornelia next to a body of water in the ice maze. Now, all of these barrels also hold some enchanted books and we find the diary of the crew. So this is entry 12 out of, I don't know how many, but it states that Captain Cornelia went to the seabed against the crew's decision. So she was fishing up for some weird treasure or something else that they don't know of, but the crew wasn't really happy with it. So I'm guessing something in the water changed Cornelia to make her turn against the crew. So we might have to go and actually defend the Vindicators maybe at some point. We might become the villain in our own story. This is... We're in for a wild ride, man. I also found this cool Dagger of Greed, which basically makes villagers and pillagers drop... No, villagers drop emeralds when you attack them. And you have a chance to get a bad omen effect when you attack a villager, of course. I freed up these villagers and it ended up triggering the raid. Now, I wasn't sure how this was possible because we weren't in a village. But yeah, there was a whole pillager crew ready to raid this pirate ship because I freed the villagers. Like, talk about calling for backup. This is a bit, this is a bit extensive, don't you think? I did loot up all of the gold and iron and diamonds that were in these chests and I know I needed to dip because the bells were ringing and the pillagers were starting to spawn man. Luckily he was able to only shoot me one time and I didn't get knocked out of my boat. So we were in luck. We got away safely. Now all of the stuff you are seeing on screen now like the maze rose and that cool spear and this tiara of blinding abyss this is end game stuff you craft it with some of these weird amethyst crystals and netherite so you know it's a pretty strong set if it requires two netherite ingots now 
How do you get these amethyst crystals, you might ask? Well, that's by killing a special boss that spawns in the ice maze. You'll know when we, when we come by it, and it's pretty scary. For now, I wasn't focused on getting that. But the world had other plans because I felt vibrations under the ice. Which means that the mother of the maze had spawned in the water. Now, I was doubting whether or not I should try and face this boss already because we were on day 18. We were not ready to take this on. I tried freeing up some space in the ice to see if I could maybe snipe the mother of the maze down, but I was really doubtful. This would not be an easy endeavor, and I could very well end up losing my life if I jump in the water carelessly. So I did the right thing, and I went away. It's a really rare chance that the mother of the maze spawns, but I just couldn't take the risk, man. It was not worth it on day 18. We had so much more to live for, and we were still so very young. <laughs> oh man, that was, that was a stupid joke. Anyway, back at home, I stored away all of the cool stuff that I'd gotten, and I made the terrible helmet. Problem being, I still had that netherite helmet on. And that netherite helmet it still had more than 350 durability points, and it had him breaking three. So I came up with the very bright idea that I needed some form of regeneration. And first I enchanted my helmet, of course, we brought three and breaking three, so we were in the money. This helmet was going to be amazing when I could finally equip it. But we needed some form of regeneration if I wanted to get this durability down. I did do some exploring on day 19 because I wanted to see what this wild, wide world had in store for us. First, I found this really weird abandoned structure. Everything was caved in, there were remains of people everywhere, and there was a chest, which I hope held some great loot. I did find a golden apple and some remains of mobs that they probably slayed in this place. Now, I wanted to get out of here as fast as possible because I spotted some really insane world generation. Look at this place. There are so many hills and floating pieces of land, it's really cool. I wish I could set up a base with like connecting bridges everywhere. Man, my builder's mind was working even though I'm absolutely horrible at building stuff. But nonetheless, I enjoyed the whole flight while exploring and I noticed a mob captain spawning. Now this captain spawned above ground I was pretty sure, so I immediately went looking for it. And lo and behold, I found him immediately, and it was another creeper, oh my god. I just want to get close and kill them with my sword, it's so much less of a hassle. But the zombies were running all over the place, and I decided I was going to use my trident for a while. Because I could just place myself on top, and just spam this trident down and rain hell like Neptunus on their ass. And that's exactly what I did. And I finished off the mob captain, and he dropped some new cool gear. Now. This was a better totem of undying, actually, because this was called a lucky charm, and it had protection one, and it gave me one luck, so that means all the loot I find in the world is gonna be even better. Look at that. That's what I call an amazing find, man. The next day in my base, I was trying to figure out ways to lower the durability. One of the things that I thought of was setting myself on fire, and no, I'm not gonna do it with the campfire, but there is a mod installed that campfires give you regeneration. So if I just pluck down a campfire and theoretically light myself on fire with a set of armor that, well, can break, so I just made a spare set of iron armor, it should lower the durability by a substantial amount. Right? <sighs> well, you're about to see, I was completely wrong. So, it stays on 333 durability the whole time I'm on fire. My iron armor was taking damage, no problem, but since it didn't get counted as armor, this helmet was not losing durability. So I had to come up with some other genius way how to quickly and efficiently lose durability on this thing. I don't know why I kept going, but I almost ended up killing myself by... This helmet is really testing the limits of my sanity at this point. Honestly, I just want to equip my terrible helmet, man. Come morning time, 
I exacted my revenge on the world. I slayed cows, weeping angels, more innocent cows. Babies as well? Baby zombies. Let me clarify that one, baby zombies. And, well, the world kind of took a little bit of revenge on me. Because I tried taking my helicopter and this creeper blew it up. He also almost killed me. So, killing innocent mobs and slaying some baby zombies doesn't work. But there is always money laundering in order to satiate my thirst. And there we go. No, it's satiate hunger and quench your thirst. My goodness. Anyway, I did do a lot of trading and we were back on track. I got another 30 levels and I wanted to start enchanting my diamond sword. Now, there was one enchantment that I was looking for in particular and that is looting 3. Because we are in a semi-vanilla mod pack, the looting is gonna come in clutch when I'm killing mobs like, for example, Enderman, blazes and some more of the rare mobs like the only way to get wither heads is by actually farming wither skeletons so looting three was going to be a big necessity i didn't get the looting on my first try so i did some more trading to get another 30 levels and we were going to give it another spin and i got distance problem being that at the time I didn't know but distance only applies to the chakrams you can have spinning around you like those two you see in the non enough items menu it doesn't do anything for your sword like I thought it gave me some more reach distance but in reality it doesn't I then had a stare off with this villager he was looking at me sideways man that big nose those dark eyes staring off in the abyss Man, I had to go fight some demons, because, wow, that villager really had it out for me. And I tried using the distance sword, but I soon realized it didn't work. Although, when I stepped outside, you gotta appreciate the scenery. Just the light rays coming into the forest, having a nice stroll out in the world, even like that, just... It works, it's cool. I did decide on making another helicopter. I'm just gonna call it, keep calling it a helicopter because the Gyrodyne. That's, that's a weird name, man. But I needed a couple more carpets and then I was set. I could make another sail. I had two hulls and a propeller and I got another Gyrodyne. And that way I could traverse the world a lot easier. I also made another diamond sword to have ready when I get another 30 levels. I then took a quick nap. After waking up, I had some cooked mutton as my breakfast. Cause you know a healthy diet goes a long way. And we went straight back to hell. This time I wasn't gonna get teleported by no weeping angel. We were gonna have a good time. I wanted to get some quartz. I wanted to get... Oh my... F okay. Grab the quadcopter, the gyrodyne, and let's fly back home. And while checking where I had to go, I realized it was thousands of blocks away. Literally thousands of blocks away. It was so far away that my atlas started blagging and give me frame rate lag after I checked where I had to go. So yeah, I um I just flew. And I flew for a very long time. This is 2,000% sped up, by the way. This is 20 times the speed you are seeing. <laughs> Just put some lo-fi on the background, have some disco lights, and let's vibe out to this, to this stuff, because, man, it's the only way to deal with this. I did arrive back home fairly quickly, so that kind of made me happy. I didn't have to spend a full day flying around. And I actually found that after updating the mod pack, we had a ton of artifact slots. So this was actually pretty cool. I could also spin my character around, which was kind of funny. The only sad part about updating the mod pack is that I installed the latest version of the shaders pack and it kind of broke the shaders a little bit. I'm not really sure what happened. I mean, there's still shaders active as you can see, but it's not as heavy as it used to be. So. I spent my days trading away, trying to grind for that level 30 again, because we we were in desperate need of a looting sword to advance our world to the next level. All of my minions were sleeping soundly, 
and when I went to check outside, there was a um, target practice inside of my Gyrodyne. Look at that! <laughs> Bad. I think this is some new kind of approved torture that they use. <laughs> I did try to sleep, um, but I miraculously failed at that task. It's because I didn't turn on the sleep tight, so I had to go into the mod config and change it to sleep, and I set it to immediately, and that way I could sleep again. Because I wasn't going to spend half of the day trying to sleep, because there are some conditions you have to meet and everything, but I'm sorry to everybody that wants me to stay true to the mod pack, but man, that just takes too long, and I don't want <laughs> I don't want to spend half a day sleeping. I did have to go caveman mode and hunt for some berries in the middle of the day because I completely ran out of food. I did do some flying around and I spotted this burnt down pillager structure. Like, I'm not sure if they had an arsonist in there or some kind of like pyro, but man, this place was completely burnt to a crisp. I found the scarf of invisibility and a goat horn and as well as a curse of vanishing. Now, I would have really loved if the Curse of Vanishing was on the helmet instead of the Curse of Binding. But oh well. I did equip my Scarf of Invisibility, and this thing was going to be pretty sick. I was going to be invisible, no mobs would be able to see me. Or at least I thought so. And I was just going to have a great time. You can equip it in the necklace slot. And if you equip the Scarf, you will have to re-equip it once more, and then you will turn invisible. And look at that, boom! We're invisible, baby! I felt like I was the, the hero girl from My Hero Academia, completely invisible. Just the clothes were, were visible, pretty much. I did some more training, and I got to level 30. Now, you all know what that means. We're gonna spin the roulette again, do some gambling on getting that looting 3. I didn't get it. <laughs> Oh well, at least we got sharpness for so I was still happy. Now, you did see fast spin as the other enchantment. Joke's on me, that's also a chakram enchantment. Woo! And back at home I set a waypoint because I installed a minimap mod so that I could set some waypoints because the atlas was completely impossible to work with. I'm really sorry guys, but it was just impossible. Back in hell, I went in for round two. I also disabled the, well, I lowered the Weeping Angel's teleport rate, so that should be fixed. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Oh my god. These things are really testing my limit. These things are really testing my limit. Nonetheless. I left my helicopter at home, so I had to walk all those thousands of blocks again. 2,000 blocks, 2 kilometers, straight walking. What the hell is this kind of dog? What is going on? This is some kind of hell spawn, man. Why is it healing? Oh my goodness, this thing's gonna actually kill me. <laughs> okay, second strategy. Blow him up with the creeper and finish him with the boat. That's a solid strat right there, boys. Oh yeah. As an epic gamer, I spent the whole night walking through the whole world, pretty much, and I finally made it back home. Never, never back, back down, down never, never what? Never, never give up. up. <laughs> and there it was, there was my helicopter. All right, I was definitely never leaving my house with that one again. And as you already know, we spit it again. Never back down, never what? Never give up! <laughs> I, this time I did lower the prize, motherfucker. I'm gonna go insane if this keeps happening. Oh my god! We are We are 3,000 blocks away from shit <laughs> I'm out. Nah, it was done. Nah. I had to take a break, dude. Honestly. <laughs> Three times in a row. I was joking about changing the teleportation rate of these weeping angels. I kid you not, I did it immediately after this one. I also upped my shaders pack to the maximum settings, so we were going to have the maximum output. 
Don't worry about that pop-up in the chat of cheat items. I was just checking the recipes for the waystones that I installed. Because if I was going to get teleported one more time into the godforsaken land 3,000 blocks away, I wanted to have a waystone on me so I could go back home. That was a very serious segment. Oh my god. Almost as serious as the crafting recipe is not working anymore. What is going on? The whole world seems kind of broken at this point. But, nonetheless, I was still having fun. Despite all the raging I do at the Weeping Angels, I thought it was a pretty funny mechanic. I mainly thought it was funny because I disabled it. <laughs> but it was funny the first couple of times. I did do some more money laundering, and that always puts me in a good mood because we get experience and money. Who doesn't like money? Come on. And there we go. Just like that, we're back in the nether. I'm ready to spin it up again. I put a waypoint down, and things were starting to look good. I could finally do some nether exploration. And look at that, it's one of the weeping angels. And oh my god, it deals so much damage. What is going on? <laughs> okay, I gotta take the high ground. Holy. Yeah, sure, spawn a skeleton right in front of me that's gonna shoot me in my eyes. Oh my god. Dude, we are so close to dying, this isn't funny anymore. I'm really gonna die on 824? Are you kidding me? Nobody disables me, bitch. Are you kidding me? Come on, come on, come on. Why is that weeping angel still coming towards me? <laughs> Yo! At least the soul sand slowed down the skeleton so he couldn't catch up with me. And oh my god, we finally made it to safety. Whoa, this is some wild stuff, man. Let's just gather some quartz, get that level 30, and let's bounce. Let's go back home. The nether definitely was not for me before I had a good helmet. Wow. That was a really exciting uh, four days already. Woo! 24 days, actually. <laughs> you are going to die. You must pay for the sins of the weeping angels in your land. I also figured out a way to decrease the durability on my helmet. I, I was, it was genius. I felt like I had a PhD in engineering. I was going to set up a redstone clock, a dispenser, and put snowballs inside. So the gathering of the snowballs was the easiest part of this plan. I also killed an enderman and got another ender pearl so I could make another waystone, which was amazing. That was great. I set up the redstone clock. The dispenser was already. I blocked myself in. I put the snowballs in and I don't take damage from them. There is no way it's going to be this difficult to get the durability of a helmet down. Even throwing the snowball on myself doesn't deal damage. I could also set it up with a dispenser and arrows, but I did not have enough arrows for that. So I burnt myself alive, which, yeah, as we know, doesn't do anything, but I was starting to go crazy. I did actually see some really cool new items in this mod pack, and I found the Volcano Sword. Now, I started to get my sanity back when I realized that this thing deals 10 hearts of damage, which pretty much means that I can kill things and drain their sanity, or at least that's how it worked in my mind, and I had to resort to getting hit by a zombie well calculated like 750 times so yeah I bet you were thinking that I was joking about getting hit 750 times by a zombie I'm not joking I put a campfire down I got regeneration and I got hit 750 times by a zombie this clip is sped up 2000% as well and by the time this clip is going to be done, you're going to think, wow, that was a long time getting hit by a zombie. No, we weren't finished yet. Because daytime came and the zombies started burning. And as we all know, burning doesn't decrease the durability. So we were still stuck on this piece of crap. <laughs> that ice tower is the most cursed thing I've ever seen in this mod pack. I even broke all my diamond armor, getting hit so many times. Diamond armor, completely broken. Yeah, I... I was... I, 
I was speechless after this night. Speechless. It's blasphemy. Although, doing the money laundering, it still made me really happy. So I could buy infinite amounts of diamond gear. So everything was actually pretty good. So we were back on the grind. And Lumberjack Alabro came back out. And I was going to chop this big, dark oak. And, well... It was only 48 logs, but with this axe that I've got, it goes really fast. And it's still as ever satisfying watching a tree fall down like that. Like, Aurelcraft and Symbolica both got those things, and it's amazing. And, yeah, I'm getting hit by a zombie again, and this time in the water so he doesn't burn, because burning doesn't do anything. It's a really boring process, I know. I'm gonna skip most of it anyway. But, yeah, I still had to get hit like uh, 200 times. I also collected a lot of falling stars, which gave this mana crystal, and I got star power. So, well, call me invisible, call me star power, I feel like I'm a magical girl in an anime right now. During day 27, I actually found a pretty cool structure. This is a snow pyramid, and I've never seen one of those in this mod pack. So, I broke inside, and I knew this thing was rigged with TNT, and I did not want it exploding in my face. So, first I took out the TNT underneath all of the chests, and then I was gonna loot this place up. I was ready, I was hungry for some artifacts, man. Absolutely hungry. But I got left with that feeling of hungriness, because there was not a single artifact in these chests. Although my interest got really piqued by this cherry blossom looking biome. Why is it turning red? The crimson? What are these floating eyeball things everywhere? Oh my god, what the fuck is that? <laughs> this is a wild biome. And yeah, I know I'm eating rotten flesh. Don't worry about that. I kind of ran out of food a really long time ago. And I haven't taken the time to kill some cows yet. So bear with me for a while. We're just going to get through this rotten flesh. Don't worry, mom. It's just a phase. I did find a cool spruce jungle temple it's like a spruce temple and i know you're supposed to do the puzzle but yeah come on when you got an axe like this and lumberjacking skills like this you just burn through the whole place i did find a cool enchanted book though that was a good find also some riches and then i found this shrine type of thing now i might be with mr worldwide speaking six languages but this was a little too much for me so if somebody wants to pause these frames and go ahead in the comment section and translate it, go ahead, be my guest, I'll read it. <laughs> I also found a nearby village, and hey, look at that. We might not have to be a caveman eating rotten flesh anymore. We have some bread, we got about 20 apples, we got some potatoes, we're doing good. Balanced diet, oh yeah. I then put a waystone down, and I called this one far so I knew where I should continue my exploration. And I could just freely teleport home. That is such a satisfying feeling. It's so satisfying. Back at home, I stored all the riches that I'd gotten during my travels. And I still had to figure out if I wanted to get hit over 100 times. And I decided now was as great as a time as ever. So I just went for it. I killed some phantoms. I got hit a couple more times, and finally, I could equip my Prot 4. Unbreaking 3, Terrible Helmet, oh my god, yes! We're in business! Skeletons deal only half a heart of damage with each two so shots. It's amazing. The helmet makes so, so much of a difference. One piece of armor. Well, I mean, given it has Prot 4, but I had to defend my villagers from that skeleton. He was looking for them. I'm just staying my, standing my ground. So I claimed my prize by waking him up. We got trades to do, my guy. We got money to make. <laughs> we had enough for level 30 enchants. And I wanted to enchant my chest plate. We only got prop 3, but that's still fine. It's an upgrade from prop 2. I also made another waystone, and we were good to go. I could do some more exploration now. Back in hell, I figured out that I could also use the flying machine in there. Of course. Why hadn't I thought about that earlier? That would have fixed my whole weeping angel problem as well, because they can't reach me. Stupid! So, yeah, that was kind of stupid of me. But anyway, we're flying out in hell, and I found 
some of that hell ore that I need in order to make the volcano. And yeah, I know I'm a noob. I didn't turn off my notifications. Sorry about that. But there we go. We found the hellstone ore. Why does it spawn lava? What? Okay, I'm glad I'm in my flying machine because that lava would have caught me if I was standing right in front of it. It does seem that the ore did not get broken by the lava, so that's amazing. We got four ores from... Wow! From one block. That's amazing. You, my friend, are going to die. Oh my goodness. Whoa! This dude's fast. He's throwing hands, man. God damn! I got one more raw hellstone, and I figured out that you need to combine the raw hellstone with obsidian to make the hardened, the raw hardened hellstone. That you can smelt down, and then you can use that to make the volcano. And it deals a whopping 10 damage. That's big, like a diamond sword with sharpness 4 deals maybe like 9.5, I believe. I used my helicopter and my bow as an Apache before I tactically dropped in. I also had a fierce battle with this blaze in the air. And then I thought it was time to drop in. I kind of forgot I didn't have a parachute and almost ended up killing myself. But we were still gaming. The helicopter was intact. It did not get blown up like last time. And I had the rotten flesh to sustain me. <laughs> yeah, I already burned through all of that bread and all that other stuff. Yeah. I did find a cool chest with some uh, diamonds and some potions. As well as this weird fire staff that I couldn't get figured out how it works. So, if you guys play this mod pack for yourself, please tell me how that how that staff works, because I got no idea. I also couldn't find anything on the wiki. Using my Apache tactic, I just straight cheesed these guys, and I found an actual bastion, but I was still a bit scared to go inside this bastion. So I made a note on my map, and I continued exploring. Because first I wanted to find some more Hellstone, because the armor set is also really strong. It gives like extra melee damage, extra knockback resistance, pretty crazy stuff. And is that a diamond in the sky? There's no way there's diamonds on the nether roof, come on, that would be pretty whack. Oh, it's a warped stem. <laughs> Man, that's a scam if I ever seen one. Imagine towering up with blocks to that. I did kill some magma cubes to get some magma cream because I wanted to make some fire risk potions because that is a must in the nether. I collected some tears and oh my god, one of these things snuck up on me. And why can I not get outside? Oh my god, this thing deals damage. Oh, that's a big lag spike. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <sighs> It's fine. We got the raw hellstone. We're doing good. I can make some molten gear. I can make the volcano. All right. We got a waystone on us. It's all fine. Just place the waystone down, set it up, call it really far, and just teleport home. Why do I lack the experience? I had like 33 levels. You. Ah, there we go. All right. We are gaming. We got 32 levels to spend as well, so that means we can make some new enchanted gear. I also needed to take my giant nether portal down. I know, it's really sad. We had to cut the budget a little bit on this one, but I was finally able to make that hardened hellstone. Now, after it was done smelting, I was able to make the volcano. So I first nourished myself with some <laughs> more <laughs> rotten flesh. Man, I should really go out and hunt some animals, to be honest. And I placed everything in a designated chest for the nether. That way I could keep everything a little bit organized. Just slightly. It was still a chest monster. But I realized that... Man, it was a roller, roller coaster of emotions today. I was lacking blaze powder to make the volcano. So back in hell, I raided one of the cool structures that I found and I claimed the finest blaze powder in all of hell, slain by yours truly. Back at home, I was gonna use that together with these molten ingots to make the volcano. It also sounds really cool, like a sword that's like big, it's fiery, 
It's the volcano. Yeah, that's awesome. Can't wait to see this thing in action. Also, the armor set looks pretty whack as well. But I need a lot more ingots for that one. So for now, let's just stick with the volcano and let's put a level 30 enchantment on that bad boy. Look at that already. 10 damage. Dude, this thing is gonna rip through everything in this world, honestly. And it even looks really cool holding it. Nah, we're not gonna put that fast spin on there. We're gonna reroll these enchantments. Oh, sharpness four. Knockback two. That's I. That's I. We can we can roll with this. Yeah, I completely ran out of food. But besides that, we were looking pretty fly with this volcano now. I had a pretty good setup. Totem of Undying, Volcano, Terrible Helmet. I got the Kitty Slippers, which I also found in the Nether. And yeah, man, the drip was hella clean. And that sword was gonna slice and dice. I was feeling really stoked, dude. I also put the extra mending book I had on it, just for good measure. No mending goes a long way, and I definitely didn't want to lose this volcano. And one of the things on my list was also to make armor sets of all these ingots, because we got the Crimtine, Crimtane, we got the Meteorite, we got the Demonite, we got... You can even make a space gun with it and lightsabers. Dude, this is so wacky. I love it. Meteor Axe looks pretty sick as well. Meteor Leggings to increase your magic damage. Dude, all this stuff is so sick. I can't wait to make it. But first, we're gonna take a small rest. We're gonna take a break, drink your water, sub to the channel, and stay along for the ride. And we were back at it, flying out in the local flying crib. I'm dubbing my gyro down the flying crib now. Also, meat's back on the menu because I found some random cows and sheep. So, we were adding a variety to our diet. The one thing that still remained was money laundering those green diamonds. I also made a ton of campfires because I figured out that campfires, they give you the regeneration. And I now have 30... 32 regeneration spots on me. Portable regeneration spots. How cool is that? We did have to scale down on the nether portal. Um, it's smaller, but it still works. Come on, man. <laughs> Out in hell, we were flying, and I found another one of those hellstone ore. Hell, yeah, hellstone ore. And, yeah, I forgot it drops lava. <laughs> This could have ended so much worse. I actually thought it would break my helicopter and I would plummet to my death. So I saw life flash before my eyes. Though I did find some more hellstone ore. And this was a great find because I could finally make some hellstone armor. And the armor is actually pretty whack. It also gives you damage bonuses, attack speed bonuses, knockback bonuses, all that all that good stuff, you know what I'm talking about? Like this would be a substantial upgrade for from diamond gear. Also the pants and the boots give more armor points. We'll get into that later. But yeah, I got 14 more of those hellstone ores. And then also man, I need 14 more obsidian, but uh, that's, that's an issue we gotta worry about later. Because I found something that almost crashed my game, but this nether fortress looked just a little bit different from the normal one. I found a giant tower that had glass windows and a wither skeleton with netherite armor. This guy scared me. Luckily, it was only a stone sword that he was wielding because if that was a netherite blade, he would have slashed me. I did find some running shoes, which increase my speed and give me step height, as well as some bombs. So I was going to be fast and I was going to be able to bomb stuff along the way, which was awesome. And then I stumbled upon the Blaze King. Yeah, so I placed the campfire down, and these beams that came out of this copper blocks, I mined immediately, because I thought this would weaken him somehow. It felt like the right RPG thing to do. And I activated the boss fight. The 500 health Blaze King was gonna go down. He started spewing some real mad fireballs and fire sprays towards me, but I was dealing a substantial amount of damage. He was dealing some spicy damage actually. Considering I'm running a pretty strong setup, this guy was a force to be reckoned with. Luckily for me, 
I had enough food and campfires to last me a lifetime. I only got three chicken on me, so this is gonna be a rough fight. Luckily for me, my sword dealt a ton of damage. We were rocking the volcano and we were driving it straight through his eyes. This fight was not gonna last long. Eating my third to last chicken, because I only have three left, this meant that I was already halfway through my food supply, but his health was also halfway. Although for some reason this guy started to get some type of resistance effect and I wasn't able to damage him. He was shooting some blue fire now that slowed me, but that was no problem. Fireworks started to go off and this fight was getting crazy. I really enjoy boss fights like this to be honest. There were fireworks everywhere and I was about half health. I ate my second to last chicken and this was starting to become a pretty close shave. I wasn't entirely sure if I was going to be able to finish this guy off. I was dodging the fire everywhere I was jumping and trying to get my hits in very tactically. I ate the last of my chicken, so I knew I had to go for it right now. It was all or nothing. He started emitting a red particle effect, but I was the first to finish the other one off. Into the ashes and reborn was the Witcher Elabro. Our first mob hunt was completed and we claimed 600 experience and the Blaze King's helmet. Oh yeah. This felt really great. We defeated our first boss on day 31. And the Blaze King helmet has really low armor. Why is it only two armor? It does have like a special effect, so apparently it gives you a bonus when you're low on health. But yeah, having only two armor, that definitely wasn't worth it. I did find this weird warped fungal temple, and inside was a zombified hoglin. Holy hell. This thing dealt three and a half hearts of damage as well. That's kind of whack, man. I don't want to miss too much with that one. I did quickly loot up this structure, but there wasn't anything, well, I mean too great inside these chests. There were three golden blocks and nine golden ingots and that was pretty much all the cool stuff that was in here. Back at home I started organizing all of my chests because it had been a really wild day 31. I did however still have to get all of that nether... I was gonna say netherite. That obsidian! And I actually found a portal while exploring that held a much, much more than enough obsidian to satisfy my hellstone needs. So I got 16 obsidian, I got two more to make some more waystones, and back home I combined it to make the raw hardened hellstone. I immediately put it into the furnace, and I needed first one ingot to make the boots. And I was really stoked, I gotta tell you, because these boots were going to be a really strong increase in my offensive capabilities as well because as you can see here it gives me four armor which is one extra armor and it gives me seven percent increased melee speed so pretty much a seven percent dps increase i did try rolling for a good enchantment but i ran out of lapis so i hit the mines as fast as i could because we had those 34 levels just sitting there look at them Getting some extra lapis was pretty good, and while exploring I made sure that I got at least a stack of lapis, because, you know, we already hit enough hellstone ore, so we were going to be able to make the leggings as well. I did get a good enchantment on the boots, because I got protection before, and then I made the leggings. And these leggings give me extra increased melee knockback, and they are also more powerful than diamond in the defensive capabilities. I put it inside and I got an immediate protection for and breaking 3 roll which was absolute bonkers. And I remembered that I still had an unbreaking and power book left, so I combined those with my boots and we got 2 more armor points on the leggings, 1 more armor point on the boots and we were rocking a strong upgrade of my defense. Shadow box with some more demons. And then I checked out all of the different trinkets that I could obtain. And I started oogling that endgame armor. Oh my god, look at that blinding abyss set. Mm. That looks good. I want that. 
I did do some Apache helicopter sniping for this mob boss. Well, mob boss, what am I saying? Mob captain. And I got an extra rare drop again. Later that night, I also found a ruined nether portal that had a lucky scarf. And oh my god, it applies an extra level of fortune to mind blocks. We had fortune four, boys. Fortune four. <laughs> and the scarf was looking drippy on my armor set. Man, that was awesome. I did also do my first melee combat with a mob captain. And look at this. The guy was not even able to put a single heart of damage on me. We were getting pretty strong, I gotta say. I also found this Vindicator tower that looked more like a tower from Hogwarts. But nonetheless, I went inside Rainbow Six Siege style and I breached his house, slit his throat and looted all of his belongings. After that, I skedaddle skedoodled away on my gyrodyne. Man, it never gets old saying that word. It's such a such a funky word for a helicopter, like a gyrodyne. And after having my little gyrodyne moment, I found another ruined portal. And I was ready for some more artifacts, man. Keep them coming. Yeah, well, um, that's not the kind of loot I'm talking about. Nonetheless, I did still appreciate the beauty of a nice sunset. I also found this weird floating island with blue blocks all over and oh my god are those grenades? What the hell? Got a potion of iron skin and I got a balloon. Huh. So I got grenades and a balloon. This is a pretty interesting find. I also got around to raiding a woodland mansion. Now this thing was absolutely swarming with mobs. And yeah, those biting thingies, I was not messing with them. Yeah, that's right. You're looking at like eight vexes right now. And you hate them as much as I do. No, actually, I probably hate them even more. The, the weird thing about these vexes is they're so small, but they deal so much damage. Why do they hit like a truck when they look like a midget? I, I will never appreciate the person that put vexes into Minecraft, honestly. I will find you, and I will spawn vexes in real life. I did organize my chest a little bit more at home, because I got some pretty cool stuff while I was raiding that woodland mansion. Mostly I got some emeralds and another totem of undying. And while I put the grenades in my inventory, because I mean, who doesn't want to roll with grenades? We're definitely going to use them at some point. And I freed up a chest to put all my artifacts inside. I also created some armor stands because I was going to decorate the upstairs with armor stands. I was going to put the coolest pieces of gear that I found onto these armor stands. And I wanted to make this top floor my permanent residence for sleeping. I also wanted to find a way how to display my boss items. More, how do you say it? More in the face? So I was thinking about item frames, but first I went to the ice maze biome because there were still a couple of structures left that I hadn't raided. Mainly the places where a ton of pillagers spawned because before with that old helmet, yeah, you remember that netherite one that took 750 hits before it broke? Yeah, that helmet really did not do us any pleasure because they would easily kill me. During the nighttime, however, I had to farm a little bit more angler fish because my helmet was, well, it was getting close to breaking. So I needed to be able to repair it. And of course, yeah, you have to use the rare material to repair the helmet. Given it is a really good helmet as it has one more armor point than diamond, I spent a good amount of time spear fishing for these angler fish. After a long time, I actually managed to get two of those uh, Poisoned? No, angler fangs. <laughs> I was gonna say a poison fang. I actually managed to get two angler fangs and I went home to immediately repair the helmet. And those two were barely enough to get it over half durability. So one of the tasks on my list during like the next couple of days was definitely get mending. That was on the list. 
I however used a really rare treasure pouch that gave me just a plain old fucking iron chest plate. I'm not even kidding. It's a really rare item and it gives me a normal chest plate. So I had to go back into lumberjack elaboro mode and I felled a lot of trees because I needed more materials to do money laundering. So there we go, I felled a ton more trees and I got stacks upon stacks of logs. But as you know, this amount of logs would never be enough. So I felled one, two, three, four and five more trees. After that, I was actually done with felling trees for a little while because I spent pretty much half of the day just outside here. The rest half of the day, I was spending on getting money, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually spent a, a really long time on trading, crafting more sticks, then trading and crafting more sticks and trading and crafting more sticks and trading and crafting more. Yeah, you get the gist of it. I spent all the way until, well, halfway to day 36, crafting and trading sticks. <laughs> it did net me two whole stacks of emeralds. And I yoinked another villager from the, uh, yeah, the poor souls over at my neighbor's place. God damn. They are literally going to have no villagers left when I'm done building my base. But it was high time that I got mending. Uh, yeah, he was really not happy that I put him in my house. But this guy was... Man, he needed to, yeah, square up, man. Get that mending enchantment for me, honestly. Find it somewhere. I did yoink a buddy for him, so at least he wouldn't be alone in his research for mending. And it was actually a good thing. Because I was going to need mending for a lot more things than just my armor. I was going to need it as well for all of the cool weaponry that I found. Because currently I was only rocking the volcano. I immediately tried getting their trades up and pretty much splurging all my emeralds and to my absolute surprise this guy had mending on his first level up. I'm not joking. I got really unlucky in RL craft and I guess I'm getting really lucky now in Symbolica. So I immediately traded for four mending books with him and I enchanted all of my gear with mending. So, yeah, um, bye-bye to the mid-game, hello to the end-game. We got a full, really strong set of gear that's fully enchanted with mending and prop 4. Just the chest plate was lacking a little bit, I wanted to find a substitute for that. But that was gonna be in due time. While exploring during the night, I found a really cool temple structure that had a blue bomb inside. Now. I'm guessing this is like the enchanted apple version of a normal bomb. So I'm really curious to see what kind of effects this bomb has. I also hit the jackpot because I found the central loot place of this dungeon. Now I wasn't really sure if this was good loot because it was only like a heart of the sea and some prismarine crystals. But I, I mean I guess I'll take it, I'm not gonna say no to free loot, am I right? I also found another sky base, so that means we're gonna get another artifact. Oh yeah, let's go. I wonder what this artifact is gonna be actually. Hey look, the floor looks kind of rainbowishy. That's pretty cool. So what do we got? We got a lucky horseshoe negates fall damage. Negates fall damage. <laughs> Dude, these artifacts are on a whole different level. I take no fall damage anymore. I immediately tested it out and I completely fucked it up because I jumped into the water. But that didn't really matter because I was going to slay some innocent pillagers. Actually, there is no such thing as an innocent pillager. Die! <clears throat> I had to gather my bearings and just enjoy a chill ride in my helicopter. I did have the bad omen effect and I may or may not have triggered a raid on a completely innocent village. And after that I may or may not have left them completely to their own devices. But hey, I, at least my problem was solved. I didn't have the bad omen effect anymore. <laughs> I am such a terrible human being. Holy. 
I did find a really cool graveyard and I wanted to see what was up with this place because it, I, I felt my spidey senses tingle that there was going to be some good stuff inside of this place. The grave robbing didn't really do anything good. I mean, there were a lot of bones, which is kind of a good find, but this was going to be the main place. I was going to... Ooh, shiny amethyst. That's kind of nice. While exploring the sea during the night, I found a structure that I'd never seen before. This looked like some kind of submerged base. And I was all for it. I wanted to see what's up. I also developed a new strategy. Because I could now negate fall damage, I could jump out of my helicopter, break it, catch in midair, and then fall. So that was cool. This place held some really cool items. I um, got a fully loaded up anvil and this place held enchanted books and this is amazing we found a looting two book inside of this place so you already know we're gonna be upgrading the volcano even more we're gonna be adding looting to it soon while exploring the sea a little bit more i found a submerged chest with some terra mine artifact it allows you to slide it down walls and you can combine it with another artifact to allow climbing of walls. So there is like inter artifact. No, I'm, I was going to say some really cool word, but I don't even know what I'm saying. Gotta appreciate the beauty of the sunrise in the crimson biome though. I know I've said it a lot during this mod pack and I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to say it a lot more, but this pack is absolutely gorgeous. And like Every gym bro says protein is on the menu, boys. We are getting beef. We are getting so much beef that my nickname could be Lean Beef Patty. Although I don't have the right gender, but that doesn't matter. We got protein and that's all that counts. I then found a half capsized ship, which was pretty cool in all honesty so i wanted to check it out and i got some pretty cool loot out of it some lapis some iron and some emeralds as well as the armor trims but well we're rocking pretty much all modded gear so i don't think those armor trims really matter that much next on the list however was another weird structure that i found inside of the ocean and this structure was going to be something very interesting Although I did not know it at the time, but lost and forgotten hints towards one of the mobs that is on my to hunt list. So this was a really cool structure. At first it did look like I fell into some kind of weird conveyor belt system and there were spirits trapped everywhere. I got an advancement for releasing them apparently. There were a ton of furnaces with... Well, levers that I didn't really know what... Ooh, that's gonna explode. Oh my goodness, this whole place is trapped. Um, alright, yeah, uh, pretty cool. I, um, have some random explosions here. Got the enchanted book, which was pretty nice. And then I turned sandstone into soul sand using some weird black magic that I really don't know what was going on with this place. And then I went to check out the second room in this structure. Now, the second room is something that I didn't realize now, but I'll realize later. This is the place where you make corrupted dust to genetically manipulate an Enderman into becoming a corrupted Enderman. Which, hint hint, is another mob on the hunt list. I then stumbled upon this big room that I wasn't really sure what it should be. But a piston activated, and I saw a block that I hadn't seen before, and it was bedrock. And, oh my god, don't tell me this is the archer's base. Oh yeah, there we go. I activated the boss fight with the collector of souls. So we jump straight into the awesome strategy. We place down a campfire, get the regeneration bonus, and we started going ham on this guy. Now, this guy has some really cool abilities. He can teleport away, he can use healing potions that we have to destroy before he can heal himself, and he will summon 
copies of himself to also hurt you and hunt you down. Now, this fight was a lot easier because there was so much water inside, but this guy can deal some substantial damage if you're not careful. In the beginning, I didn't really not know what I was doing, and my sword didn't seem to deal that much damage. Although the knockback of his arrows and his copies spawning all over made the fight a lot more difficult, I was not gonna give up. This guy stood no chance against me, because once I pulled out my shoddy, my 45 millimeter, this guy was hurting. I capped his ass so many times he looked like Swiss cheese and I was having a good time. He was having less of a good time because every time he took out a potion to heal, this guy got shot and I pretty much Robin Hooded that potion out of his hands. The copies that he summoned did do some pretty crazy stuff because they pushed me outside of the room which gave me the fear that he was going to be able to heal up easily while I was preoccupied with his copies. Luckily for me, the copies despawned and I was having to deal with the mobs outside. I ignored the mobs outside and I went straight back for the Sanctum Keeper. I was not going to let him heal and I pulled out my shoddy once more. A couple of bow shots later and this guy was going down. He was starting to lose health fast, but he was able to get one healing potion off. He summoned another one of his copies, but this time I was prepared, swimming through the water and dealing the final blow to his head. The Sanctum Keeper had been defeated. We got a really big chunk of experience, and we got the challenge Free the Sanctum. So, this guy drops a spirit bow, which has a split enchantment, and if you sneak while charging your bow, you will actually be able to teleport to the location where your arrow lands, which I find is a pretty interesting mechanic. And he also drops a set of gear. Now, this gear we could put on the armor stands, and it would emit a certain particle effect, which will look really cool in the base. I also picked up this buried treasure map along the way and while digging for the treasure I was hoping to find artifacts but I got a little bit disappointed because it was just a plain old heart of the sea. Although I wasn't going to pass up on the heart of the sea because we, we could make conduits with them, it was a little bit of a letdown that there was no cool artifact. After the high of the boss fight I only wanted the best of the best gear, you know what I'm saying. I did however go upstairs and I placed the Blaze King helmet into one of the armor stands. Now, it didn't really do it justice as it appeared as an iron helmet. So I needed to get creative with it and figure out a way how to display it more properly, more elegantly. And I figured out on this glowing, the glowing item frames. So if you place the bow down, it shows up the name and in the background, you can see there is the armor set that the Sanctum Keeper dropped, and it's emitting the really cool particle thing, which I thought was an amazing addition to my base. At my library, I also freed up a little bit of space in order to place down some soul sand to make a nether ward farm, because my library was going to function as my brewing place as well. And I thought that like 18 soul sand and 18 nether warts would be big of enough farm to sustain one guy's potion needs, pretty much. I also organized my potion chest so we can make potions as we go along the mod pack, and this would just be a lot easier and it looks a lot nicer. I also crafted another waystone because I ran out and I wanted to have a safe way to get back home, if you get what I'm saying. And I went back to the nether because I still needed to get some soul sand in order to make that nether ward farm. And man, these weeping angels, they still scare me. They just show up out of nowhere, man. Like all of a sudden, there's like 20 weeping angels surrounding you. You can hear them all over the place as well. They're giving me darkness. Ugh. Man, this thing is creepy. Oh God, they're spawning everywhere. Oh boy. Better destroy these quickly. I gathered up a bunch of soul sand and I was going to continue my nether exploration a little bit longer. 
I wanted to see what the nether had all in store. And one of the cool things that I found were these shadow chests. And this one had a treasure magnet, which increases the radius that I can pick up items from. Which is totally amazing. Like, it's, it's great. It's so great. I was never going to lose my gyrodyne ever again. And I said it before and I'll say it again. This mod pack looks incredibly gorgeous. Even the nether has a whoa, really specific vibe to it that is kind of horror-like. Like this is a, a scene straight out of a horror movie made in Minecraft. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. During my exploration, I did however find this weird bastion type of structure. And I wanted to raid and loot everything inside of it. I finally made my way to the towers and all of these piglins knew immediately what was up. They were fighting to protect the loot inside these towers. So I knew I had to find that loot no matter what. I quickly ate some steak and I ran out of food. So I needed to place a waystone down and quickly make a visit home in order to get some new food in my system. My protein rich diet had to keep going. You know what I'm saying? If you miss a day of your protein, it's not going to be a good day. I also placed the soul sand that I'd gathered in my brewery stables and I was able to farm these netherworts now. A seedy place indeed. I also put some extra enchantments on my bow and we now had unbreaking 3, power 4 and mending. I had a ton of arrows in my quiver so I wasn't worried about running with the infinity as of right now. Then it was back to the nether and we were going to absolutely decimate everything in these bastion towers. Now, these places hold a lot of blazes as well. So I went upstairs and I wanted to dis disable, disarm, <laughs> it's disarm, let's use disarm. I was going to disarm that first blaze spawner and some weeping angels showed up. I can really never get rid of these weeping angels, man. They keep spawning everywhere I go. And spoilers, it's gonna get a lot worse in the future. I did manage to finally get those blazes away and there were so many more piglins left. These guys were wielding gold axes and they actually hurt quite a bit. Luckily for me, I killed all of the melee guys already and I just had to finish off the archers, which were no big deal. I had a ton of steak and I actually found where they keep their valuables. There is a second floor, like a basement floor to these places. And there are the weeping angels. Of course there are weeping angels. Oh my goodness. There's spawners everywhere, golden blocks everywhere. And some of these places even hold artifacts. So we're definitely going to try to loot up every single tower in order to find some really sick new artifacts. Also. Claiming some extra gold blocks is always useful because I can use those to make golden apples. Now, while exploring, I found the other towers and I dug straight into them. I found a chest with ancient debris. So, these places can also hold some really valuable items. I found a panic necklace, a netherite ingot, netherite scrap, and so many more arrows. These chests are absolutely king. This is like the best loot I've found in the nether yet. Although these places are really heavily guarded by weeping angels. Also look on my minimap. All of those yellow dots are pretty much weeping angels just waiting around. I jumped down and because I was blinded I didn't realize that I fell into a lava lake. Now this was a really bad situation to be in. I needed to get some blocks and tower up so I wouldn't burn to a crisp pretty much. I managed to get myself out of the lava and I made my way onto a safe platform. And that's when the lag spikes hit and I realized that there were weeping angels coming in from every single direction. I needed to come up with a plan fast. I realized I still have my gyrodyne so I was gonna try to use that to make my way out of the sticky situation. But it kept glitching and I wasn't able to enter it. So I threw something out of my inventory and apparently that fixed the issue. I was able to mount my gyrodyne and I got away. That was a pretty scary situation, I'm not gonna lie. 
I did use some more Apache helicopter tricks and I sniped down every single one of those piglins. I looted up their base and I got the best necklace in the game. This is an invincibility necklace and it gives me double, I think, the iframes of what you normally have after you get hit. So I will get hit less frequently, which is amazing. I also found this real bastion and there were two chests inside that I really wanted to loot. But if I compare the loot of this normal bastion to those bastion towers, then yeah, I know which one I'm picking every day of the week. Like this bastion, the loot didn't stand no chance against the towers, man. Come on, what is this garbage? After a little while, you already know what kind of tower that is. That's a Blaze King, and we're gonna kill it. I do really like fighting this Blaze King because it's just a stationary target. But he does pop off and it's a really cinematic fight. Look at all everything that's going on. Got the campfire in the back, fireworks going off, Blaze King goes down and we get so much experience. I'll also get another Blaze King helmet which is also pretty cool. Back at home I also got some extra food in order to, well, satiate my hunger. Because we were running out of food fast, we were taking a lot of damage. But that was no issue because we had mending on everything. I did quickly store away most of the goodies that I got and I realized you can craft a magic mirror. Now for those of you who don't know what a magic mirror is, that is an item that allows you to teleport home from any place in the world. So it is pretty much a get out of jail free card and I definitely needed it. So I gathered up some sand in order to smelt it down into glass and I gathered some extra sand in order to start preparing potions because I wanted to fight Captain Cornelius soon. And well, she is really, really strong. So I put the Blaze King helmet inside the item frame and I needed to go ahead and get started on my brewing stand because we hadn't brewed before. First, however, I did make that magic mirror and of course the recipe gets completely scrambled because I don't know what is going on but the magic mirror had been created. Now I had a couple of questions. Does it lose durability? Does it teleport me instantly? And it seems like it is a really, really fast teleport. So if I ever fall into the void, <coughs> spoilers to RL craft, I will be able to teleport home safely. Also, look at this. There's boots in the game that allow flight. Flight! <laughs> we really gotta get ourselves some rocket boots. This is getting insane. I crafted up a bunch of glass bottles because I wanted to make strength, regeneration, and weakness. Splash potion of weakness, to be absolutely clear. I'm not gonna weaken myself. I'm gonna weaken Captain Cornelia. But before that, we first had to make awkward potions. We had to make the strength potion. We had to put the glowstone in, the redstone in, all of the gunpowder. We had a lot of stuff to craft. And man, look at that divider. That looks sick. That Whisper of the Abyss does 14 damage. Whoo! I really want to get myself one of those bad boys. <laughs> they do take a lot of netherite though as well. And so many of those weird amethysts, but that set looks amazing. Okay, back to brewing some potions. I wanted to get strength, I wanted to get regeneration, and I wanted to get the weakness to throw on the boss. After a little bit of brewing, I already had my strength and my regeneration done, and I just needed to make the weakness potions. After brewing up that weakness, I needed to get some gunpowder in order to put that onto the weakness to make it splash. We're gonna splash weakness all over Captain Cornelia, oh yeah. She does not know what is coming. After a little bit more brewing, I started adding glowstone to my regeneration to make it regeneration 2. And I also put some gunpowder onto it. Because in a pinch, I need to be able to splash myself with the potion. I was also checking out all of the other potions that I could make and the turtle master looked pretty good. Because you can get resistance 4 even. But it will also give you a really, really heavy slow debuff. And that wasn't interesting for us. So I got the sea stew, all of my potions ready. I got a blue bomb, I got campfires and the horn of for summoning Captain Cornelia. Everything was set. So I immediately made my way over. Oh no, I first made some golden apples. Of course, we had to craft some golden apples first. And then I made my way over to the ice maze where I summoned 
Captain Cornelia. I needed to splash myself with the strength and the regeneration and I was ready to go. I finished off the angler fish that for some reason got stuck on me and now I absolutely missed my weakness potion. <laughs> she flung me up and it flew over her head. Are you kidding me? I ate the sea stew and I was ready to go ham. Captain Cornelia was going to be a difficult fight because she has a lot of movement abilities and she can switch her weapons as you will see here soon. She takes out two swords and now she will have a slashing ability to slash right through me. This was no problem however because I was stacked with potions and I still had that blue bomb to finish her off. I quickly swapped out some extra potions and I splashed her with some weakness. That weakness potion made con contact and she was hurting. She was absolutely hurting. Four minutes of absolute weakness. Now I needed to splash myself with regeneration and strength and then I could finish her in phase two. In phase two she will spawn those maze roses that float around her and these things deal heavy damage. Regeneration came in clutch and I started dealing some extra damage. I threw the blue bomb onto her and it did some damage, which was a good tactic to use against her. See, apparently she swapped out her weapons to some different weapons now. I wasn't sure what the effect was, but I did notice that I got poisoned. Now she also has some insane regeneration. Look at her health go. Oh my goodness. I felt like I was in phase 3 of the fight. She completely regained all of her health. Golden apples came in clutch and I was ready to deal damage. Although I did need to figure out a way how to corner her against the wall so she wouldn't knock me back all, all the time and I could deal the maximum amount of damage possible. I was getting kind of concerned because she took out the weapon that I was trying to make. The weapon that if you remember deals 14 damage. And it also has another effect where every time it will give me corrosion and it will decrease my defense by 10%. So this fight shouldn't last more longer than it needed to. I needed to finish her off now. Which I did. Captain Cornelia was down. Echoes of the shipyard had been collected. The frozen key was in my inventory and the three bolt helmet was also mine. Now, the maze that the, there was a map that she dropped and it showed a X on the mini map that was 8,000 blocks away. So, I did a lot of flying around to find this place because this place was going to hold the frozen chest. And the frozen chest holds a special rune with special capabilities. So, we definitely have to find one of those. During my travels, I did find another one of these frozen towers and they're actually pretty cool because they can hold some really strong enchantments. And I was still hoping for that looting three, man. Come on. I, I got looting two right now, but I need three. So we got some diamonds. We got some fortune three. Okay. Impaling one and fire aspect. All right. We did get some more ender pearls. So that was a great find. And after a long time of flying, well, a whole day pretty much, I made my way to the X on the map. I'd found myself in another ice maze biome. Now, I wasn't really sure why in the first ice maze biome there wasn't a frozen chest, but I'm not gonna second guess it. We're just gonna go for this chest first. And all of the scary noises were starting to happen. I felt there was another fight up ahead. And it wasn't gonna be an easy one. So I made my way down into this labyrinth of ice and snow. And before I knew it, I found a pillager house underneath the ice. And a giant monster waiting for me down there as well. I wasn't sure what that was. First, I thought that that was the mother of the maze, but it seemed to be a regular eel. This is a regular eel? Are you fucking kidding me? There is no way. This thing was actually pretty scary because it could deal some heavy damage and it has this weird ability. Yes, it shoots me away using sonic beams. And there were a ton of frozen zombies waiting for me in this lake. I grabbed my pickaxe and I tried to get my way out of this death sentence because all of these tortured souls were ready to eat my soul. 
I ate up a golden apple and I went straight for that eel's head. I wanted to get him as low as possible, as fast as possible. This guy was going down. He did shoot me with another sonic beam, but that was not enough to keep me away. He went down. Now, this thing dropped some echoes of the ship graveyard, which are, awesome, which are awesome. Later on in the mod pack, I'll figure out that you can craft a special amethyst with these echoes as well. But the first thing on the list was fighting my way through this pillager base in order to get to the frozen chest. I wanted to claim the main prize of this event. After a lot of fighting, I actually found another logbook. There was, there was talking about returning back to the surface. Similar fate awaits the crew that awaits Captain Cornelia. And there was talk about a dark forest valley. So I think the story will continue in a dark forest valley, but I haven't been able to locate one of those just yet. I fought my way through countless waves of these pillagers until I finally made it to the top floor. And there it was. The frozen chest awaited me. I first claimed some of the random treasure that was inside the other chest and then it was time for the main prize. I took out the frozen key and opened the chest. And oh my god, that is a beautiful chest right there. So many echoes of the ship graveyard, a god apple, some astral dust and this rune of the storm. Attaches to the sword in your offhand and makes it deal 30 three percent increased damage in cold biomes that's absolutely insane a third of the damage that's added on top of it if i combine that with that special spear that we will make later that will deal insane amounts of damage now the only problem was that i put it on my volcano for now and well i didn't really have a way to take it off <laughs> So that's kind of wasted, but again, it's not really wasted. I did organize my chest at home and I put the astral dust safe away because the astral dust is used to make that beautiful chest plate you see at the left top corner right there. That beauty we will make at some point. While exploring a little bit more in the nether, I found a place that was absolutely swarmed. Swarmed with these weeping angels. This was this was the most I've ever seen in my whole playthrough. There's just so many. And if you're wondering exactly how many there are, well, just look there. Those are all weeping angels. I'm not kidding. That's like 30 of them. So I did the most reasonable thing any veteran Minecraft player would do, and that is get the fuck out of there. <laughs> I'm not staying there one second longer than I had to. Because even while raiding this pillager place, well, this zombified piglin base, I... Man, I butchered that. It's not a pillager, it's not a zombified piglin. I am deeply sorry, and I want to apologize for butchering their names like that. But there is just so many weeping angels that I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. There's no way that anybody could ever deal with this amount of infestation of weeping angels. Come on, I can't be the only one thinking that this is un... You're not able to kill these things. They just teleport you. But we had that magic mirror and this thing is fucking king. Look at this. It teleported me straight back home. And I was good. We were gaming. At home, I made some more netherite ingots. And I was able to put them safely away in the chest. We had just enough netherite ingots to make that sick spear that I was talking about. So that was definitely something I wanted to do. I also put some depth strider on my boots. And we were absolutely rocking endgame gear right now. I put loyalty 3 and impaling on one of my tridents. And I believe loyalty 3 makes it go faster to my inventory. Yeah, it is a lot faster, actually. This is pretty sick. I did go to the ice maze again, and I figured out there was a chest down here. And it had an umbrella that can be both used as a shield and a glider. That's a pretty interesting way. I did raid up another one of these pirate ships in order to get another horn of Cornelia. And I raided up the 
enchanted books as well. Now you already know I'm gonna get straight into Captain Cornelia because I wanted some more of that juicy loot. I also wanted another frozen key because I needed to get one more of those storm shells to put on my next weapon. This time with Captain Cornelia, I was a little bit less passive and hold back. I was going extremely hard on the aggressive. I wanted to corner her as fast as possible and then kill her as fast as possible. She stood no chance. Phase 2 happened pretty much instantly. I ate a golden apple. Wow, that was a good voice crack. I ate a golden apple and I went straight for those three bolt helmet. I was gonna say decapitate, but well, we gotta destroy that three bolt helmet. She stood no chance, took her down, claimed her loot. Although that regeneration is pretty insane. Come on, man, just die already. What the hell? Okay, there we go. Got another three bolt helmet, 150 experience, another echo of the ship graveyard, and another frozen key. I did, however, get another ice maze shelter. That's the right word. Map. But this one pointed to the exact same shelter that I did before. So there seemed to be an issue with the generation of these ice maze shelters. However, I had half stacked cooked pork and I was ready to make another gyrodyne because um, I left mine in the nether somewhere and I <laughs> honestly can't remember for the life of me where I left it. But it was a pretty easy recipe to make. We had a ton of iron, we had a ton of string, also a lot of wool and we were back exploring in the nether because there was one of these bastion towers right outside of my portal. So you already know, we completely butchered every single living being that was inside this tower and I raided up the chest and it gave me a netherite ingot, a netherite scrap, an ancient debris and an antidote. This thing was brimming with loot. Back at home I stored away all of that stuff as fast as possible and I tested out the umbrella. It looks pretty wacky. Definitely not something that I'm going to be using during these 100 days. <laughs> it looks a bit too clownishy for me. I did some organizing during day 47 and I spent some time just basking in the delight that this mod pack is. I was just chilling in my base, crafting some items, crafting some eyes of ender in order to prepare going to the end. And I'd made a quick stop in the nether. And holy sh... Oh. That is one of the best artifacts in the whole game that I just found right there. That heart, as you will see later, is insane. I also got another two gold god apples, which is absolutely bonkers. I'm so happy I found those. Those are going to save me some trouble. Many iron blocks later, and this crystal heart gives me an extra 10 max health. We're talking a full five hearts extra. The other artifact that I wanted to find were these vampiric gloves. We have to find these at some point. Although one of the things on my list that I wanted to cross off now was making that full three bolt suit. Now this suit has a set effect that will take away that freezing that we have in the ice maze and it will also give me water breathing underwater infinitely. So if we want to farm those mothers of the maze that spawn at the very bottom of the ice maze, I need to make these three bolt pants, boots, and chest plate. Now for the chest plate, I needed some oxygenelium, oxygen, gi oxygen plant. I need to farm some oxygen plants in order to make air canisters. Now these things are farmed using an axe, apparently, which I thought was kind of strange. And you will get definitely ambushed by some of these anglerfish if you're trying to mine this thing. But it's no problem because my volcano rips through them and I deal 33% increased damage as you remember. I claimed as much of the oxygeli oxygelium, that's the right word. I claimed as much as I could and then I went Hello there. back. What are you doing in my base, man? What? Oh yeah, I started a raid on my base. I kind of forgot about that. Oh well, I made two air canisters and I finished up making that three bolt chest plate. Now, the three bolt chest plate is going to be big because these, this thing has actually a really good armor rating. Although one issue, you really do not see squat with this thing. I did get pretty lucky because a mother of the maze just spawned underneath my feet. 
but I had unenchanted gear on, and I, I really didn't see squad at all. So I was a little bit scared. I'm gonna admit, going from a pro four maxed out set to this well, <laughs> a lump of iron with oxygen tanks, it's it's making me kind of nervous, especially when that is the mother of the maze. Yeah, we gotta kill that thing. <laughs> oh boy. I used the spear fishing method. So I trapped it behind some ice and I was throwing my trident on it every often, every so often. And I thought I wasn't doing any damage until I saw its health and it was really low. So I finished it off. It was a lot easier than I expected to be honest. And we claimed an echo of the ship graveyard and an abyssal amethyst. We already collected one Abyssal Amethyst. Although given we needed three to make the uh, the spear. But we already had one and that was good enough for me for now. I did try to do some fighting with this diving set. But I gotta admit man. That helmet is really distracting me. It is, it is not useful in the slightest. So I switched over to my terrible helmet and I put on my normal set again. I wasn't gonna deal with that flimsy set. I put a ice maze waystone down because we needed to farm anglerfish. Because they spawned the mother of the maze. Why are you guys still in my base? I will kill every one of you. Back in the ice maze, we were getting ready to farm these anglerfish. Because an angler fish, when it spawns, it has a 0.5% chance to spawn a mother of maize along with it. So we had to do some spear fishing. And we were gonna spend day and night and day and night <laughs> farming these angler fish. Because man, the spawn rate is actually incredibly low. I didn't realize this until I farmed them for two days straight. It's like two hours of farming, just straight, day and night. And yeah, I didn't get a single Mother of the Maze, which was kind of sad. So instead, I went back home and I needed to figure out a way how to actually get this to, to work efficiently. <laughs> oh my god. Why are these fish making moo sounds when I kill them? What is going on? The whole world has been turned upside down. I guess you could say I got a cow fish. <laughs> I gotta give some props to the mod pack creators for that joke. <laughs> but yeah, I spend an incredible long time even just farming these angler fish. The good thing about it though is that they have a low chance to drop the echoes of the sea. So I got a couple of those. Back at home, I did some gravel grinding because I needed to get some additional flint to make the waystones because I completely ran out of flint. I made another waystone and it was time to take a break from angler fishing and to do some exploring. And I'm never gonna get tired of hearing my gyrodyne's noise while I'm just soaring through the sky. I did spot another pirate ship and this one was huge. So I needed to raid this place immediately. The loot was kinda mid though. I wasn't really sure why this big of a ship didn't have any bounties. Arr! Oh man, that's a stupid joke. Anyway, I got two bottles of enchanting and that was pretty much the best loot that I found in there. So during my travels in the night, I collected every single waystone that I found on the way. Because in the newly generated villages, there are now waystones that spawn after I installed the mod. So I got around to finding one of these guardian structures and there were a ton of trident throwing drowned guardians everywhere and I completely lost track of my gyrodyne. I had lost my means of flying through the air and I was sad. I did get another trident, however, and some grenades and speed potions, which is a really weird combination. Like if you go to the apocalypse, what do you bring with you? A trident, grenades, and speed potions. I mean, that sounds about right. Finished off another mob captain and this one gave me another trident. With Riptide 3, so that was pretty cool. Using Riptide is actually a lot of fun. I heard that when it rains, you can use that Riptide in the normal world as well. I definitely have to try that one out. However, these Guardians, 
we're dealing quite a bit of hefty damage, actually. I was really surprised to see it. Because I wasn't keeping track of my health until I fought this uh, mob captain. And that's when I realized I was on like four hearts. So I had to dip really quick and heal up. I ate a golden apple and I was ready to go back in. I've been fighting these guys for the whole night pretty much already. Finished off the mob captain and he dropped a med kit. Ooh. Instant health 2 and regeneration 5. Ooh. That's a spicy med kit right there, I'm not gonna lie. I traveled underwater and I was going pretty fast because I got these nice flippers on. Oh yeah. Yeah, I found some flippers while I was exploring the seawaters. And man, these flippers look amazingly funny. After that, I found another sky village and I managed to make my way up to it. Well, it's not a sky village. It's one of those floating islands with artifacts. And I needed four more blocks, which I had in my backpack. And they came in so clutch. I made my way to the top of this sky island and I was ready to loot what was inside. And... Oh boy. Allows flight and slow fall. Allows flight. Are you kidding me? We're gonna be soaring through the sky. There's no way. I immediately donned on these new fledgling wings. They didn't show up on my character profile though, so that was kind of sad. And look at us gliding through the air. This is amazing. The flip the flippers make it look even more ridiculous, but I was having a great time. It didn't allow flight the way that I thought it was gonna, because I thought flight meant like literally like creative flying through the sky. But it just means we can jump up really high and then slow fall downwards. I mean, give or take, these fledgling wings are still really good. Back at home, I had to store away my loot that I've gotten during my travels, and I wanted to check out a couple new artifacts in the artifact tab. There were uh, three different kinds of wings, fledgling, angel and demonic wings. There was also a third kind, a fourth kind, but I wasn't really sure where to find them or what differences they had. So for now I made a tinker's table and I thought this was gonna allow me to like exchange artifacts and build them up and create them more diversely, but uh, it didn't do anything. Yeah, I couldn't even access the block. It's like a decorative block. So that was kind of weird. I also swapped out my diet for some fish that made me glow. I'm not entirely sure if this is um, <laughs> an approved food source, but hey, we'll do it. We'll, we'll roll with it. It gives me a good saturation, so it's nice. And we were back out in the world exploring. I was soaring through the sky with my new gyrodyne. I think I've had to make like five or six already because I keep losing these things. But they're pretty, they're pretty cheap to make, so it's all good. And after a while, I found another underwater library. So you know we definitely had to rush in and loot everything that was inside. You can never have too many OP enchantments. Come on, guys. What do you take me for? I want to min-max everything. So we got some distance and power. That was looking pretty fly. And in the other... Ooh, another mending book. I got another prot 3. Some invisibility potions, which is kind of cool. And a legendary captain spawned nearby, but I couldn't see where it spawned. So there was no way for me to know where I should go. I got another protection 3, and that is a really good book right there. That's a Depth Strider 3. And we definitely needed that upgrade. I also mined some sand along these submerged islands in the ocean. And they seem to hold some loot. So I was hoping they could hold artifacts as well. And lo and behold, they hold potions of iron skin, mining speed, health, and artifacts. So these places, they're, they're all over the, the ocean, by the way. So these places are really sick. They do have some trash loot a lot of the times, but sometimes you can find artifacts in them. I also found a guardian temple. So you know we had to rush in and kill that elder guardian. I mean, come on, man. We can't just ignore the basic Minecraft bosses. Although they were gonna stand no chance against me. And yes, you see that right? I am drowning constantly while doing this dungeon because I didn't have anything to give me... Uh, <laughs> I didn't have any doors with me or respiration, so I had to deal with it this way. But it was all fine. 
I had my glowy fishes to eat, and this elder guardian stood no chance. No chance, man. He got absolutely decimated. He dropped some basic stuff, some prismarine crystals, fish, and some golden blocks and a wet sponge. And a little bit later, I found a whole room filled with wet sponges. So I might have some ideas what to use that for. In a nearby trident throwing escapade, I found another pair of flippers. These were equipped in the shoe slot and they allowed me to swim incredibly fast. Look at that. This is amazing. I feel like I'm just drifting through the water. I also looted up one of these ocean temples. It's like a desert temple, but well, this one's in the ocean. I had a Depth Strider 2 book, so that was kind of cool. And I actually missed it. Oh my god, it's only- holy shit, rewind that. It's only now that I noticed that the vampiric gloves were inside of that chest. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. Well, um... <laughs> I do have the cords, so if we do 200 days, I can still go back to that. Another legendary mob captain showed up, and I didn't see that it was there. I couldn't find any beam to indicate where it was either. Although the gliding did make exploration so much easier. That's actually really cool. I like that gliding. Back in the water, we were going at a Tokyo Drift style. We were scaling all of the forest, and it was time for a little breather back at home. I called it far six and I teleported straight home because our inventories were completely filled. I needed a good night's rest first and then I was going to sort my inventory a little bit. When I woke up, I realized that my uh, backpack was, uh, yeah, filled to the brim to say the least. And I kind of didn't want to deal with the hassle of cleaning it out. So I just made some golden apples and called it a day pretty much. I did put some respiration on my terrible helmet because that was definitely one thing we had to do. If we were gonna do some more underwater exploration, I definitely needed that respiration. I also put the mending book I found on my trident, so we had an infinite source of ranged damage now. And I can never really escape these weeping angels, they're even showing up at my base now. I... Whoever put these in... I will find you. I did brew some strength potions, which will do something really fun with pretty soon. But I had to make a little detour into the nether. Because it was finally time to do some nether exploration with these flight wings. Although, I didn't take my flippers off. <laughs> and using flippers in a hell-filled biome with lava, it's just funny somehow to me. I did manage to locate myself a nether fortress and that was amazing because we need to grind three wither heads. I wanted to scrap it off of my list that we fight the wither because we needed a wither nether star. I was about to say a wither star. We need a nether star to make a beacon and that way we have that completed as well. Although I did find a good spawn of some wither skeletons and there was a wither skeleton mob captain as well. This fight started to become really scary once there were a couple of weeping angels that showed up. You know, you can never really escape these guys, huh? Also, I noticed that while traveling, there are shadow chests that hold some potions and artifacts as well. So I wanted to spend a good amount of time running around the world and looting these chests. Now, one of the things I noticed that after two days of looking all over the nether for these chests is that they usually all have the same kinds of artifacts. Like that Lucky Magnet and the Flame one are the two artifacts that I find mostly in these chests. And yeah, we, we got teleported back to the overworld by some Weeping Angels, because you know, they still have to make their entrance. They need their five minutes of fame as well. Luckily for me, we crafted that magic mirror and I was able to get back home like this. Boom, back at home. So we went in the nether for round two. I located a really big nether fortress. This was nothing like I've ever seen before. We got the first witherhead when I fought that mob captain and I needed two more. I did do a little bit of fighting, but it didn't really net me any witherheads. So I spent a really long time. And I'm talking like a really long time. Just grinding out witherheads, man. Grinding out these skeletons. Ah, I took some time. But eventually I did manage to get another Wither Skeleton head. 
Look at that. Two in the bag. We needed one more. And on my lucky streak, five minutes after that, I found this Wither Skeleton. And he was looking kind of funny because he dropped another Wither Head. So, you already know what we're gonna do instantly, right? We're gonna sleep. Yeah, I need some rest. Full, uh, full eight hours of sleep is the best way to go. And after that, we head straight into the Wither Boss Battle. <laughs> we are going to kill this thing, claim its Wither Star, and then we're gonna make a beacon. Because I wanted to make like an under giant underground mine. First, I had to focus on this boss fight. I had to lock in. You know when you're sitting back, relaxed in your chair, gaming with your PS controller? And then you sit up straight, you're hunched forward, and you lock in. That's what I was doing with this Wither. I was sniping him down, and after you would hit 50% health, I was going to give him the one, two, left, right, good night, Itadori style. For those of you who are reading and watching Jujutsu Kaisen, you're real OGs right now. Although this wither was uh, yeah, a piece of cake, actually. Um, I even had some time to take some screenshots while I was fighting him. <laughs> it's an unnecessary flex, but yeah, <laughs> it's a flex nonetheless. This guy was easy. I was ready for the ultra wither, man, but I still had to summon him. So that was going to take some time. But yeah, I got some really cool screenshots. I'll post them now <laughs> on the screen. But yeah, it was really funny. Fighting this wither, taking screenshots, trying to make it look aesthetic. Did have to eat a golden apple, but shh, we were still within easy. Easy. I was just mainly focused on getting good screenshots, to be honest. I wasn't even focused on killing him. But in the end, I did have to deliver the final blow because I still needed to play 40 days and we still had a lot of stuff to complete. So, wither star secured, I was ready to go back home. And we were gonna make a beacon. And you know we were out here farming these dang fishes once again. Because we still need those abyssal amethysts, man. I still gotta get a couple more mothers of the maze in order to get all the items that I want. So I spent the whole day farming them without much success. And during the night I had a different objective. I needed to farm Enderman in order to get Eyes of Ender. To go to the end, of course. But I had good news with this looting. Meat was back on the menu, boys. We we could we could just farm so much meat. Oh my goodness. I wanted stacks upon stacks of beef, man. I'm talking about I'm talking about like a hundred steaks. A hundred steaks. Back during the day, I was farming the fishes once more. Because of course, you know, there is no rest for the wicked, so we just keep slaying these fishes. All the way until nighttime when I ran across a zombie. Now, this was good because there was still a boss we had to fight. If you throw a strength potion on a zombie, it becomes a boss. Oh yeah, the green giant. And this thing was flying around. What is going on? Okay, I wanted to splash it with weakness. And it jumped over my weakness potion. What do you mean? Why does it jump so high? Anyway, the giant didn't really have that much health. It only had 100 health. So uh, during this fight, I clowned on him as well. I took some screenshots while fighting him. Just to add to the disrespect that we were doing. We were absolutely clapping this guy. He was spinning around like a clown. But the fight looked pretty cool. I gotta say. And if I can have moves like that, because he drops his shoes, which allows us to jump like that as well normally. So I killed him pretty fast, but he started floating, floating up. The guy was almost flying. And then we got the advancement. No giant is stronger than them, me. That's damn right, because we are the king of this world. Oh yeah. I got some extra experience and the giant stompers were mine. Propels the bearer with the power of giants. Hold sneak and then jump to perform a high jump. So, you know, we immediately tried it out, but... Well, the particle effect was there, but it didn't really do anything. I did run across another enderman, and this was good because I needed those ender pearls. There was also a spider infestation going on, so I wasn't really sure where they came crawling out of. But we slayed the enderman and we got no pearl. That's kind of strange. 
Okay, there we go. We got one pearl. Yeah. One pearl with looting three sounds about right, huh? I also towered up to one of those sky islands because I want me some good, good artifacts. And breaking in, I call... Oof. That's another fledgling wings. I kind of already have those. I don't really need a backup, but I'll take him anyway. And I gotta say, traveling during night... I don't know why, but these endermen don't show up that much. I thought they would spawn a lot more, to be honest. This one did drop three pearls. So we were on 11 eyes of ender, pretty much. That was kind of like the threshold that I wanted before I would go out and look for a stronghold but my sea exploration took me all the time until morning so you know we already go back to the ice maze because we are going to find a mother of the maze or so I thought <laughs> I kept grinding these stupid fishes for one more day without much success <laughs> oh you gotta love it out in the nighttime I found another enderman so we immediately started killing it and to my absolute surprise, this guy didn't even drop a single pearl. Like, we're rocking looting three, no pearls. How is this possible? I did find one close after that, shortly after that actually, and this guy was going to drop me some good stuff, right? That's another enderman with no ender pearls. How is this even possible? Is it like a rare drop or something? All right, back to the fishes. We're gonna do some more farming. I wanna get that mother of the maze, man. I wanna get me some abyssal amethyst. I did, however, quickly had to appreciate the beauty of my setup. Volcano, flippers, terrible helmet, golden hook, ma magnet on the belt, and the leprechaun hat. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks so good. <laughs> I look like the kind of custom character when you see it appear in a cutscene that you have absolutely no idea. Like, it doesn't belong there. That's how my character started looking. So, it was amazing. I loved it. I loved every single bit of it. And we had a hundred stakes to put into my... I was gonna say smeltery. To put it into my furnace. I also made the beacon, so that item was scrapped off of the list. I wanted to make this giant underground mine where I could just pretty much hollow out the entire bedrock and claim every single ore that was in there. Now I found a, a good place, a suitable place to set up my beacon. It was on top of this structure that I found earlier in the mod pack. And I never really realized just how many blocks of a valuable material you need to make a damn beacon. We only also had three layers. I used a stack of gold and like 15 iron blocks. So, what? It's absolutely mind boggling to me. I did however have to go home quickly to get one more iron block and then we were all good to go. We could activate a three layered beacon, which sounded pretty cool to me. And there we go, the beacon was installed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I need to mine all the way up to surface level. Hold on, I'm first gonna smelt some blocks in order to decorate the place nicely. I wanted to use like a dark brick and gold and like end rods and by the time I was back farming fishes, I <laughs> completely forgot about my beacon and uh, I'd forgotten it until the end of the mod pack. So I'm really sorry about that, but uh, ADHD goes brrrr. I did farm the fishes for a really, really long time. So I was focused on a different kind of grind. Not a beacon grind, but a fish grind. And that's when it happened. After six days of farming these fishes, I finally felt some more vibrations. Oh yeah, that's the mother of the maze. And we got that looting three sword, so we're gonna get a lot of abyssal amethyst. Am I right? Am I right? I'm probably not right. <laughs> I killed the mother of the maze and I got one abyssal amethyst. I got one. <laughs> this is pain. This is pain and suffering. I need at least one more to make the spear. Are you kidding me? Let alone if I want to make the whole set. I need like 12. No more. I need 15. How am I ever going to be able to do that? 
Oh, you can craft these things. Stupid. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we need four echoes of the ship graveyard. I bet I have a lot of those at home. Come on. Let me check my Aqua Mirai HS. There has to be a load of them. Oh yeah, look at that. We can make four abyssal amethyst. Oh my god, this is awesome. Alright, let me just quickly grab some amethyst. Have I really never gotten amethyst in this bag before? Okay. So I located a amethyst... How do you say it? Cave? An amethyst ore? Again, like amethyst... Uh, yeah, whatever this is. And all of the crystals inside were too little to harvest amethyst from. Yeah, I'm not sure how that world generation works, but when I was looking over the crafting recipes for the Abyssal Amethyst and the Amethyst, it looked like you can put a block of Amethyst inside a cutting board and then harvest four Amethysts from it. So I took a bunch of Amethyst blocks with me to home and I made a cutting board. I've never used it before, so it's kind of weird using it now, but hey, at least we have a way to get Amethysts. So you make the cutting board with four wood and two sticks and then you place it down somewhere on a flat surface. I had to light it up quickly. And then you place the blocks of amethyst inside and right click it with a pickaxe to get your amethyst. So I quickly sprayed all of the amethyst down and I claimed every single one of them. And I would have enough amethyst to last me for the rest of the mod pack. I mean, look at that. That's like 84 amethyst right there. I quickly put in all my echoes of the ship graveyard and I made four more abyssal amethyst. So we had six right now. And I immediately wanted to start crafting with it, of course, because, yo, look at that spear. That's sick. Why is there a weeping angel in my base? I heard you coming from a mile away, man. You're not teleporting me. Come on, get out of here. Ooh, that maze rose looks pretty cool. And that's also what Captain Cornelia used, so I kind of want to use it for my own. Now, you see me getting the materials here, and like, probably every one of you is screaming at me that I will not have enough Abyssal Amethyst when I create this. And, uh, you're goddamn right. I, uh... <laughs> In the spur of the moment, I was so happy I could make some items with the Abyssal Amethyst that I didn't really bother to calculate how much I would have left. And uh, yeah, I go and enchant the Maze Rose and it gets a breaking three and I'm really stoked and I want to use it. And then I go in to check the other crafting recipes and I realize I've got two Abyssal Amethysts left. <laughs> and I absolutely freak out. <laughs> Man, I was... I was hitting myself in the head with the closest object I had on my desk for like a good five minutes. I spent my time in remorse farming some more fishes hoping that I would get lucky. You know, the YouTuber or streamer luck that everybody talks about and I would get another one of those mothers of the maze, but I didn't. I really didn't. I did go to another pirate ship to summon another Cornelia because she drops Echoes of the Ship Graveyard. I thought if I could do two or three of those Cornelias, then I would have a surefire way to make another Abyssal Amethyst, pretty much. Now, I summon Cornelia, and the fight goes like usual. She just swings me around like a ragdoll, I gotta eat some golden apples. But I figured out that you can shoot her with a bow, and she does not repel the projectiles. So this was a really awesome way to get her to stage 2 really fast like a couple seconds into the fight and she's already at stage two which is amazing then she flings me around like a rag doll again and she's trying to make me look like that white haired dude in chapter 236 <laughs> huh <laughs> i'm gonna get more <gasps> oh my god Guys, check the chat. Holy, we got a Mother of the Maze that just spawned during this fight. Okay. Okay. It's the YouTuber luck. I'm gonna blame it on that, but I'm taking it, man. Come on. Give me that Abyssal Amethyst. I want to get that spear as fast as possible. Come here. Come here, baby mama. Give me your Abyssal Amethyst. Give me everything you got. Come on, looting. Do your work. Let's go. 
We got two. We got two. All right. We're good. We are good. All right. Let's go back home. I want to get that spear ASAP. After the spear, I'll have one left and I have two echoes. Yeah, I know. I can't really do anything with that. Let's just try to figure out this crafting recipe and... Ah, there we go. Whisper of the Abyss. Man, it's also a Seawolf class weapon, so it will get the bonus from my helmet, which gives me 20% more weapon power. 20%! If I use the endgame set of the Blinding Abyss, my weapon is gonna... It's gonna hit like a truck. Like an absolute unit. The sad part being that the better combat config did not register the Whisper of, Whisper of the Abyss, so it just looked like a stick that you were swinging around with a timer. So I had to go and get that fixed, I'll do that later in uh, the video, and then we could use it as an actual spear with some cool animations. But for now I was gonna rock with the volcano until I had the right file in order to fix that issue. But I needed to enchant it. And the luck kept on going because we immediately got loading three, baby. Oh, yeah. That's some good stuff right there. I did have some spare enchanted books so I could upgrade that spear to its maximum potential. We're talking about putting sharpness four on it, knockback two, and fire aspect two. Yeah, we're talking about some good stuff here. Now, the spear was going to be my go-to weapon to farm some of these wither skeletons because I needed to gather three more heads in order to be able to summon the ultra wither. Yeah, that bad boy is still on the list. We're gonna be doing the ender dragon and we're gonna be doing the ultra wither definitely within these 100 days. I wanted to complete my, uh, my witch hunt, my mob hunt. I got the first wither head after about a day of farming and then it actually took quite a while but it was pretty chill i had a podcast on i was watching some trash taste listening to the guys interview some guy who did an anime uh like an anime producer it was pretty cool i was just vibing listening to those guys talking farming these wither skeletons i also fixed the config with the help of the mod pack guys and look at that this spear looks absolutely amazing there's just something about stabbing things that is satisfying. And one-shotting Wither Skeletons, man, come on! This thing is awesome! This thing is absolutely awesome. And the stabby animation feel Like, if you're playing it and you're actually... Like, you're click... Of course you're clicking, but... When you click and you see your character stab like that, it's... It's so cool. I love it. Everything about this mod pack I love. Besides those goddamn weeping angels, I can miss those. I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. After a long time of farming, I got the third Wither Skeleton Head. And we were done with our Wither Skeleton Head Hunt. That's quite a name to say. I wasn't running out of steak anytime soon, but I had a ton of coal that I farmed from those Wither Skeletons. So, the coal went inside of the furnace, and all the other stuff went inside my, uh, very de-organized chest monster. <laughs> and my backpack wasn't looking much better either. Hey, I know I could have installed a simple storage mod, but, I, yeah, I, I didn't think about it. You're right, I should have probably installed that one. <laughs> I tried cleaning up the backpack a little bit. And when I put the boots on one of the armor stands, it showed up as iron. So I put it in an item frame and my wall of trophies was starting to look pretty cool. I did, however, have a couple more trophies to claim. And there was one really cool trophy that was coming up soon. First, I got some Eyes of Ender. I got a Waystone and we're going to find a Stronghold. Now, um, the mod pack was glitching a little bit. And I pressed right click a lot of times. And when I finally took the totem of Undying off, it used literally every one of my eyes of Ender. The Weeping Angel also tried to teleport me away from my eyes. I guess the mod pack really didn't want me to go to the stronghold. But yeah, it, uh, yeah I was just hoping it didn't break most of my eyes of Ender. Seems like it broke three of them though. That's kind of ass. 
I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda ass. Anyway, oh, okay, we got one more. So it only broke two eyes of Ender. That means that while I'm hunting for that stronghold, I have to find some Endermen. And you gotta appreciate the beauty of gliding through the air, wearing slippers with a golden hook, stabbing the sky with an abyssal spear. Hey, say what you want, but I call that a great Sunday. However, I did find an Enderman right outside my base. And this guy was going to be my best buddy. I was never gonna forget this guy. Because when I killed him, he gave me five Ender Pearls. Five. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. So I had enough Ender Pearls to look for the stronghold and enough to put in the stronghold. So my journey to get to the stronghold started. And this stronghold seemed to be pretty far away, actually. I traveled a really, really good time towards this stronghold. But eventually, after spending a lot of time gliding through the air, I felt that I was getting close. And just as I thought that nighttime was hitting, that's when the Ender Pearl started going underground. So instead of sleeping, I mined directly down and I got I Spy. We're in the stronghold, and man, look at the layout on the minimap. This thing looks insane. When I got to the portal, I gotta say, this setup for the end portal looks amazing. I love the whole pillar structure and chandeliers. I think it's pretty sick. We also had 11 eyes of ender, so it was just enough with the one eye that was already placed inside. And I can never, I can never get tired of staring into the abyss of the end portal like that. I did learn from my past mistakes. So before going to the end, we were first going home to craft some glass bottles, get some potions, get another ender pearl, get some, well, extra goodies that I need in order to survive. But the most important thing was that magic mirror that I have. That was gonna save me if I fall into the void, which I really don't want to happen again, because one time was enough for my sanity. I think if I die in this mod pack, I'm gonna lose my shit. Okay, I took out a couple of potions of iron skin, of speed, and I felt that I was ready. I had all the necessities with me, and I went straight to the portal. And uh, yeah, there was an iron zombie guardian at the portal. I don't know where he spawned from, but anyway, we're gonna go into the end, guys. This is it. Day 68, we're gonna defeat the ender dragon. I was taking some cool screenshots in action, and this guy actually decided to push me into the portal. So yeah, that's uh, one way of going into the portal, I guess? Anyway, the spawn in the end looked really cool. The attention to detail in this pack is honestly really sick. Refreshed all of my artifacts because for some reason if you go into another dimension some of the artifacts get a little uh, combobulated and they don't work as they are intended to. So before I plummeted to my death I refreshed them. And man, man, look at this place. This is the best looking end I've ever seen. It is so, so cool. Also so mystical. Look at that. It is just activating one pillar after another. Everything is exploding. Man, this looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, the Enderman's a paid actor. I gave him like five bucks to send in front of the shot. <laughs> but holy. The dragon had spawned. We're in. We are in, boys. Alright. I was... I gotta say, I was honestly so mesmerized by the whole ordeal that I had to lock in for a second. So first we had to take out, of course, the spinny thingies that uh, <laughs> give the ender dragon health. Man, what are they called? End crystals. Oh my goodness. The spinny thingies. Yeah, captioned that. <laughs> and it didn't take us too long to destroy all the end crystals because we had that glide and we were just going absolute ham on these things. But... Just look at this. It's just so cool, honestly. I had to just take it in for a moment how cool this fight actually was. 
And man, while you're gliding, it is really difficult to shoot arrows. I'll look like an absolute noob at this point. Maybe I just am a noob, who knows. <laughs> I also gathered some of the glass bottles in order to contain some of that dragon's breath. I wanted some of that good, good dragon's breath. Now, I wanted to get this guy's health down a little bit, but he was flying around like a madman. And every five seconds, I got distracted by the absolutely beautiful scenery. And yeah, you need a mint. That dragon breath stank. <laughs> All right, this guy jumped down. He went on top of the sanctuary and my spear was piercing this guy's heart. Honestly, the spear does so much damage. We got him halfway down and he needed to go in one more time for some melee attacks and then we would be done. I did land a couple of good shots on him with that power four and that dragon's breath looked pretty good to me. And during round two, I was able to get a good combo of hits on him and my spear takes away his armor so he is taking the maximum amount of damage possible. He was pretty much one hit away from death. And I wanted to finish it really cinematically. But this guy knew what was up. He, he was just looking at me like, nah, son, you ain't gonna finish me off that easily. I did get this really cool shot of him just flying around in the air, spewing the breath everywhere. And he knocked me back. This guy really didn't want to go out with a bang. So I went upstairs, stabbed his face. And I freed the end. Minecraft had been freed of a very big calamity. Now it was time for me to become the calamity. Haha! <laughs> anyway, I accidentally jumped into the portal. And uh, to be honest with you, I have never read the Minecraft credits. And I was actually really glad that I did because. It's a really interesting dialogue between two entities that discuss us as the player and the world we play in. And it was a really intriguing conversation. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not one for reading because I got a monkey brain and I want to kill stuff. But this was really intriguing. If you've never read it, I really urge you guys to just play Minecraft or do any mod pack, finish it, and Jump in the portal and read the credits. It's awesome. Back at home, I needed to get some books because as you see at my bottom bar, right next to the health, we got 63 levels. Also, on a small note, we defeated the Ender Dragon on day 69. <laughs> and there we go. I was just gonna spam a load of enchantments to have an enchantment library, pretty much. So I just did one after the other, just boom, 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 boom. And after browsing over the enchantments, I realized that most of them were pretty much ass. <laughs> I did get a couple ones from my, for my maze rows, and I got the fast spin and the distance. Now, these enchantments are great, but I mostly needed mirror three. Because that will summon three additional spinny things, I believe. I believe. Don't quote me on it, but I think it works that way. Because when Cornelia uses it, she has four things spinning around her. So we definitely have to put it on the list to find a mirror book. I believe I found one, but I can't remember where I left it. In the end, the first thing I had to do was get some Thalassium Ore. Because this is an ore that is exclusive to this place. After that, I found the pillar that allows me to go to the end cities. And it swallowed my ender pearl. Give it back, dude! I wanna go. I wanna go to the end cities. So I killed a couple of endermen first before I could go because, well, I need another ender pearl to pearl in, man. Come on. And I actually never noticed, but oh my god, these endermen walk pretty funny. Not gonna lie. There we go, remote gateway, we were in the end cities dimension. Now, there were a couple of things I had to do in this dimension. We had to get the elytra, we had to kill the shulker stone boss, and we had to get some artifacts, because the artifacts in these chests are going to be different than the overworld, the sea, and the nether. First chest, didn't have an artifact, of course. I mean, I can't be too greedy, right? 
right? Nah, I'm just kidding. Back when I was exploring, I found this Enderman, which was a mob captain. And honestly, this thing felt like a boss fight because he was very fast. He dealt one and a half parts of damage and he was dodging my spear. It was it was pretty insane. You know those like those spear shows where they stick a guy like really fast with the spears and he keeps dodging them. I felt like I was in that kind of movie. But regardless, I had to finish this guy off. He was gonna drop some insane loot, right? Right? Well, we'll see about that. He did deal a lot of damage, man. The guy got me down to six hearts. What a madman. He dropped a bow with a looting. A bow with looting. What am I what am I gonna do with that man? Come on. I gotta say the end remastered always looks really beautiful. I mean there's just something about glowy trees and glowy vines that tingles my heart. It was really pink though, I felt like I was in a new Barbie movie. I would have rather been in an Oppen Oppenheimer kind of scene. But oh well. Gotta do what you gotta do. We have to find some amber and an elytra. Also, apparently these underwater libraries are also located in the end in the form of an ice library. So this was pretty cool. And I mean, I still had to find that mirror book to be able to make my maze rose the strongest rose in the world. But I didn't get lucky and there was no mirror. Hey, look at this. I found my Oppenheimer kind of biome. Now this is more what I'm talking about. I also... I also mined some Aurora Crystal in order to get all of the necessary materials to make that infusion table and to get to infusing. Because we gotta make three infused phantom membranes and we gotta get some other items. Also you can make runes with this thing. I don't know what runes do, but you can make them. That's the Crystallite Elytra. That's the one we need. And it's equipable in the Cape Trinket slot, so it gives you an extra bonus 6 armor. That's wild. You can also make enchanted books with this stuff, but there is only vanilla enchantments, so no mirror, sadly. Also, when you look at these trees, um, your frame rate goes to hell. Like, yeah, you, you absolutely bug out. I went from like 120 frames to 2 frames. I did, however, have a staring contest, and I wanted to see if the mod pack first crashes or my computer gave up. Spoilers, my computer gave up. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't only with that kind of tree, the helix tree also had the issue. And here you can see, frame rate is fine, frame rate is not fine. So, well, yeah, we had to kind of avoid all of the trees. I mean, it wasn't gonna be a big issue, because we found this. That is a void temple. Well, I'll call it a void temple for now until we know the actual name of it. I did manage to get over there pretty easily. I enderpearled up on the big tree and it was actually right above a end village. Which means that, yeah, Elytra acquired. We just had to go kill the shulker that was guarding it and then we could claim our Elytra. There was also an enderman guarding it, which was kind of scary. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. We take these guys for breakfast, honestly. Oh, stab him right through the heart. There were also a couple of smithing templates and some really cool music discs. Although I didn't really bother with them because we got the Elytra. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> there we go, Elytra. It was not able to go in the cape slot, however, because we first had to infuse it on an infusion pedestal. Quickly before I went over to the Void Temple, I gathered the Dragon Head as well. Now, this thing looked absolutely sick in my inventory. It looks so much better than the plain dragon head. So I towered up using all the blocks that I had found and I was barely able to get up to that level. Luckily for me, in my backpack, I had some extra wood. And there we go, High Sky Pyramid. It looks like it has the icon for the Shulker Helmet. Okay. So I'm guessing this is where the Shulker Stone is gonna be. We just have to make our way up and then check out what this place all has in store for us. And yeah, I almost fell down there. You did not see that. The first chest that I found just held some iron. 
That wasn't really anything special. There were a couple of items in item frames and I wasn't really sure what this meant. It looked like some weird kind of ritual. Each item also had a shulker above it, so I wasn't gonna miss with that. Maybe this whole thing would explode if I killed him. Even still, I realized that this is the shulker stone. But we needed an endstone key, which wasn't present in the not enough items menu. Which leads me to believe that we have to do something in order to acquire said key. Luckily for me there is always the wiki, because in the other chest there was also just iron, and I did not know what I was doing. So I consulted the Ultras boss expansion wiki, and the key is supposed to be in a chest. So what I suspect happened is that I kinda lost my way and I opened the first chest twice, instead of the other one. Because in this one there was actually a key. And there we go, it was uh, a regular stick, an enchanted stick. So I'm not sure how Ultras coded all of this, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know why they couldn't just make items for it. Anyway, we activated the Shulker Stone. Sealed Secrets. Awaken at Kingdom's End. And this thing didn't seem to be taking much damage. Also, bows didn't do anything to it. The music is really beautiful though. We did seem to be able to do some damage to it. Every time it shot out fireworks, that looks like it's its weak point. I had to go into third person for this, otherwise I was gonna get absolutely motion sick. But there's something oddly majestic about this fight. I also activated my bla my blaze rose, my maze rose, and I was hoping that was gonna deal some extra damage. For now, I was just stabbing this thing all over when it shot out its fireworks. Well, I wasn't really timing it, I was just stabbing it relentlessly. This thing had to go down. Although, it wasn't easy to get into the effective range for my spear to hit. And remember, my spear has one more reach than a sword, so with a sword I can imagine this fight to be really difficult. This guy also knocks you down, and he eventually managed to deal a bit of damage to me. Which was not scary, because we had 15 hearts. We were good. This thing had nothing on us. It was more of a majestic fight for me. Because look at the visuals. And, well, the thing was still on fire. And it died while it was knocked out. So, there we go. A very anticlimactic way to <laughs> end the Shulker Stone fight. But regardless of the anticlimax, we reached the Shulker Stone. And I got the Shulker Shell Helmet. Now, I didn't really know what this Shulker helmet did, so I wanted to check it out. And would you look at that. It has Deep Vision 1 and the Shulker Shell of the Shulker Stone. When equipped, the bearer, will the bearer will give surrounding mobs a glow effect and all end mobs will be passive. That's pretty crazy. We immediately dive into the next item on the list, which is getting an Amber. We need at least one Amber Gem, which is crafted by 4 Amber in order to make our infusion of the elytra because i want to have the elytra on my cape slot and get an extra six armor which will make us unkillable i got some smithing template upgrades and yeah a helium flamingo allows the wearer to swim through the air swim in the air i'm not kidding this thing looked hella funny you put it on your belt and now I had a giant pink thing between my legs. Hey yo, what the fuck? I know it sounds sus, but I promise you it's just my flamingo. <laughs> look at that thing, it looks so derpy. Ah, look at the swimming. <laughs> I can't anymore. I can't. This is no. This is too much. This is too much. First, I make that stupid joke, and now look at look at me swimming through the air in the end. <laughs> oh, I completely broke character there. God damn. It is a pretty good mode of transportation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
No, it's too good. It's too good. I love this item. This item is the best item in the whole game. In the whole game. Look! Who the fuck? Oh, come on, lock in. I gotta focus on the voice lines for a second. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, so with my flamingo <laughs> around my waist, I finally found some amber lands and I immediately found some amber as well, which was amazing <laughs> because we had to focus on the video and we <laughs> Okay, we had to get the amber gem and we had to get it with the elytra and get an infusion pedestal I also moved my waist stone of the end to the middle of the sanctuary. I'll call it for now and I was gonna set up a little base. I took a stack of planks with me and I wanted to gather everything that was in this place pretty much. I needed to get a crafting table, I needed to get a chest set up and then we could make the infusion pedestal. After setting up my double chest, I could store away all the items that I'd gotten during the travels and I needed to figure out a way how I was going to place the dragon head for decoration. And yeah, that just looked weird. So this looks a lot better, look at that. Looks pretty cool, it's like a trophy. My trophy of killing the all-imposing dragon. Now, for the crystalline elytra, the infusion pedestal we need requires one eye of ender, two ender pearls, and two obsidian. Which is not that expensive to make since we have access to all these endermen now. And when I made the infusion pedestal, I first wanted to, well, pretty much free up some space in this place. I wanted to have a nice flat area where I could do my infusions. Now, we needed to collect some of the purple blocks, the purple pillars, and the purple slabs in order to make some regular infusion pedestals. Because as some of you might know, you need eight normal infusion pedestals around the infusion table, and then you can do your infusions. Also, look at this. We found a cloud in the bottle, which allows us to double jump. This is one of my all-time favorite artifacts, and I'm gonna have a hard time choosing between my flamingo and the cloud in the bottle. For now, I'll stick with the cloud in the bottle before I burst out laughing again. I did make my infusion pedestals with the purple blocks and we were ready to do some infusing. I just had to figure out how to make... Oh, you make it with slabs, that's why. So I crafted two more of the blocks and then I grabbed my slabs and I made four more pedestals. Now, you need to place these pedestals in a sort of a circular pattern around the infusion table. First, I did mess it up, but that middle one needed to go one block back. That was pretty much it. And then you can just circle around the block, place it diagonally, one back each time, and then you will have your infusion ring set up. Now, we needed to infuse three phantom membranes in order to make that elytra. And, well, the sad part being that I only had one. So, we needed to go do some phantom hunt. Although, first I wanted to make the very first enchanted phantom membrane. Look at that. Shadow money wizard gang, dude. We are doing some black magic in here. Holy, look at that. Never ending magic. I'm telling you guys, this is black magic we're doing. Also... It's 5.30 in the morning. I hope you drank your water. Start off the morning hydrated, my guys. Back in the end, I found this weird geyser that was shooting out these floating jellyfishes and they poisoned me. Man, I wasn't dealing with this. Get the hell out of here. I don't want to deal with this. What the hell? We don't do that. That's some weird stuff. Back in a woods, I found this. Shadow Walker? They're incredibly slow, but man, do they look menacing. Very menacing. I actually thought that I could get some phantom membranes and some phantoms to spawn in the end, but that didn't really seem to be the case. So I decided on doing something different as a break. I wanted to start making, and listen closely because this is going to get crazy, I wanted to start making 2,000 item frames. Now, any reasonable person would ask me, why would you want to even make 2,000 item frames? Well, good sir, let me tell you. I plan on gathering every single block in the game. I want to have my base 
completely covered in item frames, having each and every single one possible collected block in them. Yeah, I'm talking about 100% full completion. Is it possible? I absolutely don't think so. Are we gonna try regardless? Hell yeah. So I started creating a layout of the base. I hollowed out every single tower. I connected them all underground and I already placed 128 item frames. So yeah, we just had to get 1,800 more. Luckily for me, while I was doing that, some phantoms spawned and I could actually get some more phantom membrane. So that elytra was gonna be coming in the coming days as well. All right. I was feeling stoked, man. I had a purpose after killing the final boss, pretty much. Well, we still had that ultra wither left. After that, we'd kill all the bosses. So we needed, oh yeah, that's right. We needed the corrupted enderman and then the ultra wither. And then we've done all the ultras bosses. So back to some more item frames and I placed another stack down. I was even covering all of these things. Yeah, even the bridge was gonna get completely covered. I just needed to have one creeper blow it up and that would ruin my day. So I better light up this whole place as well, actually, now that I think about it. Well, back to some more infusions because after like 200 item frames, I got kind of bored of that. So we are doing some black magic again, shadow money, wizard gang type of stuff. And I got three enchanted membranes. Oh, actually, we have all the materials for the infusion of my elytra. Look at that. Just the amber gem placing in. And there we go. This was the real Shadow Wizard Money Gangs type of stuff we were doing. We were making an armored artifact elytra. I like the sound of that. The crystalline elytra. Look at that thing. It's beefy. It's nice. It's red. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Even when I take off my chest plate, I have almost a full armor bar. And I noticed something really cool. When you have the double jump equipped, you can use the momentum that you get from the elytra to give yourself an initial boost when you launch off. So it's not like infinite flight, but it works pretty cool. It gave me kind of a parkour vibes. Or like hardcore parkour. I don't know why these guys got angry at me. I was just flying around. I didn't know this was a no-fly zone. Come on, man. And while I was exploring in the overworld, I actually found my first archaeology structure. So I took out my brush and we started digging up fossils, man. We went from dark magic to digging up old fossils. And on my second fossil, I actually got an ancient treasure. I got the creeper fossil skull. So we only needed the creeper fossil body and we could make our first archaeology statue. That was also really big to have in an armory room. Sadly for me, the last block was, yeah, bone meal. So I didn't get lucky on those, so we needed to find another one. So I'll come back maybe in like 76 other days and then we can find the second structure. <laughs> Out in the open, I was grinding cows like a madman, and I actually got an eternal steak, which is not consumed when eaten. I got an infinite steak. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This is awesome. So if you kill enough cows, maybe they just have a random chance to drop it. Little bit more leather later, and I had pretty much two and a half stacks of leather in my inventory. We were grinding the cows all day. Because yeah, we need 2,000 item frames, so we need 2,000 leather. I should really come up with a, an automatic farm for these cows if I really want to go through with that idea. For now, I was just keeping it tight, keeping it simple, because collecting the blocks was going to take a long time as well. Feeling satisfied with my eternal stake, I went to bed and I took a nap. I didn't have to wait for those phantoms anymore. I did ran out of sticks. Yeah, believe it or not, but making these item frames, I ran out of sticks. <laughs> so we crafted a little bit more and I used the last of my planks to make more sticks in order to get that last 39 leather to use. And there we go, placing a little bit more to fill this tower. Now I just needed to fill the bottom. Now let's do it in quick succession. We go really fast and burn through two stacks and 39 item frames. Just like that. 
Yeah, just like that, they're all used up. That's like 160, 180 item frames. Yeah, just completely used up. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize that my base was this big, actually. But it was a good sign because we could already fit inside like 280 items. So we got started. The first items were in the respective item frames. Yeah, we're going for full completion. I wonder though, theoretically, could I reach full completion if I play another 100 days of this? I really wonder. I really wonder. Then it was time to actually get started on some serious topic that we needed to do. We needed to get back to the Sanctum Keeper because in his base there is a special alchemist room where we can craft Corrupted Dust. Corrupted Dust is used to throw on an Enderman, slap it on him and it will become a Corrupted Enderman. Now that Enderman will drop a sort of well, a special pearl that if you craft it with a gold block, you get a command block. And if you throw that command block on the wither, it will become the ultra wither. So that's what we needed to do. And it took me a really long time to find this place again. Because I had to go back in the old recordings and I needed to look up, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> what the coordinates were. <laughs> Because <laughs> I completely forgot where this place was, but that didn't matter after a couple days of swimming. I reached the base and There we go on the left side. You can see the crafting recipe The only item missing is a gas tier which I took way back then and on the right side with the red particles is the dispenser We make the corrupted dust in so we had to make a little trip to the nether But don't worry. I placed the waystone at the sanctum keeper and we needed to find a ghast really quickly. When we find the ghast and we obtain the ghast here, we can make our very own corrupted enderman, which is gonna be cool. I wanna do some uh, tinkering with life. Obtained the ghast here fairly quickly actually, and I immediately magic mirrored home to use the waystone to get to the sanctum. I also took out the blaze powder and the redstone and the sixth amethyst and I placed them all inside. Quickly double check the recipe and I noticed that I had to switch it around. So for all of those already screaming in the comment section I was doing it wrong, it's right. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. Promise. Perhaps it might not be. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're gonna get this corrupted enderman, no problem. I activated the lever and boom. Corrupted dust. We also got an advancement called mad scientist. So we had the corrupted dust now I needed to find an enderman Luckily for us. I already conquered the end and I had a plethora of endermen to choose from So which one of you fine specimens will become my test dummy for today? Although I remember back when I started playing this mod pack I Once ran into one of these corrupted endermans because they can spawn normally as well and these things are pretty beefy and deal a lot of damage. So I wanted to go in, guns blazing, but prepared. So I took a bite of my steak, I ate a golden apple, I sipped on that iron lean skin, and then we were going in. Maze Rose activated, and boom! <laughs> I almost one-shot him. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? I almost one-shot him? There's no way that's real. Alright, let's go see what's up. This Corrupted Enderman barely has any health left. Okay, yeah, so I did actually almost one-shot him. Um, yeah, the Ultra Wither should be a piece of cake then, right? I got the Ominous Pearl, and I went back home. I crafted the Gold Block, and I realized I didn't have a smithing table. I thought I'd used it before. Oh, yeah, I have smithing tables at my villagers. But not in my own base. Okay, so took out two iron ingots and I took out four planks and we just made a smithing table real quick. I placed it over the only hole that was remaining and then I put inside the two items. And I got the ominous pearl command block. Man, these items look cursed. They look really cursed. Anyway, we needed to throw this onto the ultra, ultra wither. No, we needed to throw this on the normal wither. <laughs> and then we could get the ultra wither. 
All right. I took out my three wither heads and I summoned the wither. Chuck that bad boy on there and the ultra withering heights was achieved. So I'm really interested to see what this guy all has. And it's a floating command block. Oh my god, that teleport dives to you. Whoa. Okay, this thing is pretty wild. It's also going for all of the endermen. Which is not really useful. I'd like the aggro to be on me. And he barely takes damage from my spear. Oh, the bow does a lot of damage. Never mind. Alright. Alright, we're doing pretty good. Whoa, 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 that's a big explosion. Oh my god, what is what is it doing? I have a slight feeling that these beams, if I stay in them too long, are gonna be the end of me. It's starting to deflect my arrows. And I don't deal damage to it anymore. Oh, it just took a huge chunk of damage. Alright. Time for the spear action. Come on, man. You're going down. You are going down. The spear is piercing its armor, and I was going ham. I was barely taking any damage. That extra elytra was doing work. Boom. It's done. Ultra Demise. Hell yeah. I didn't even have my elytra equipped. Look at that. But we got the enchanted core. Dropped by the Ultra Wither, when in the player's inventory gives an extra two hearts. We are at 17 hearts and an absolute unit. Back in my base, I basked in the glory as I updated the mod pack and this time there was the spell binding table. Now if you remember this from Fantasy Minecraft, this table will allow us to get a certain spell book and it just so happens that for example my volcano was a spell blade so I could use spells while wielding my volcano. So I immediately wanted to make this thing of course. The recipe got kind of fucked and, well, there was a new system how you could lock inventory slots and, man, I really didn't know what was going on. But we made the table. So we had a spellbinding table. I was already thinking of the countless possibilities. This would increase our offensive output by so much. I did, however, quickly gather some lapis and the book. And it didn't work. Um... So I was a little bit confused, because that's normally the way you do it. Nonetheless, I did some exploration in the overworld, and I kind of just took a moment to travel the world without really looking for anything. I was just really enjoying gliding around, zipping and zooming through the highlands. It was a nice break from all the fighting. Now, I also made some armor stands, because if we are going to be collecting all the items in the mod packs, then, well, of course, yeah, we have to get every single armor in the mod pack as well. So I made a special room for all the coolest armors. This was not gonna include the vanilla, diamond, ar uh, diamond, iron, gold, leather, netherite. It wasn't gonna be in this room. This was for all the special armors, like the molten armor, the diving suit. And outside, I made some armor stands in order to use the basic materials on. So this was going to be a little corner where all of the iron blocks, gold blocks, all the different kinds of armor sets and all the different kinds of tools are. So I was going to place item frames above all the armor stands and I needed to make sure that I put all the, the armor stand on the block of the material. So I wanted to get like a netherite block, diamond block, get all those item frames above and then fill them with all the respective tools and weaponry. Which was gonna look really cool. I mean, honestly, I've never done anything like this before, so it felt... It felt pretty cool. I felt like a real collector, like a treasure hunter. I wanted to upgrade some diamond armor to netherite, but it appears we need a smithing template. Now, I did look up the recipe and I figured out it is a, a netherite upgrade smithing template. That's a whole lot of things to say. But pretty much, I scoured around in my chests in my base, and I actually found two upgrades. So we had two smithing templates. So I got my boots and I got my chest plate, and I upgraded those to netherite, which was really satisfying. I really like the new interface, or maybe it's not new and I just haven't seen it yet. 
but I like that interface from the smithing table. My netherite set was almost complete on the armor stand. We just needed to have one more smithing template upgrade and one more netherite ingot. I also started putting in the basic tools. So the iron set, the diamond set was gonna be pretty much easy to complete. That was no big deal. The netherite set was gonna be a little bit more challenging. And for the gold set, I just needed to get a bunch of gold. And the leather one, well, yeah, I already used all my leather for <laughs> those item frames. So it was gonna take a while to find some cows. I did, however, quickly check if I had, and I did, another netherite upgrade. In my nether chest, I had one more upgrade laying around. Now, I didn't have any more netherite, which was quite sad. I did, however, place the blocks of the corresponding materials, and I placed the armor stands above them. I also created the first piece of the molten set. So, that is pretty cool. I wanted to immediately put it on the armor stand of the special armor. And come on, man, look at that. I had to check back again because that looks really menacing. I also put the Cornelia set, the diving suit on, well, three bolt suit, it's actually called, on the armor stand next to it, and this place was already starting to look pretty fly. I did, however, go mining really quickly. I know I have a ton of gold, but I just wanted to do a little lo-fi mining session, and that's when I found this skulk. So I turned off the lo-fi, and I turned on the boss music, because that means somewhere around here, I can find a warden, and that's pretty much like the last boss we still have to kill. I did find this really weird temple looking thing, a skulk temple maybe? I wasn't really sure what this was, but when I mined into it, there was nothing to be found. It was just some decorative blocks. I did find some skulk sensors, which means I'm getting closer. This boss did not know what was coming for him, and after I found this giant hollowed out cave that was covered in skulk, Darkness started to engulf me, and I started hearing the sounds. The Warden was coming, man. The Warden was coming. We were going to defeat him, and we were going to claim supremacy over every mob. Holy, this guy's got 500 health. What? Oh my god. Oh my god, what is that damage? What? There's no way this thing deals that much damage. Is there something wrong with my armor? What? This thing is beefy. Okay, let's get this god apple going. And then let's perforate him with the spear, man. There's not really much else we can do. I could try to use some ranged stuff, but, well, the darkness is just making it really difficult. This fight was starting to get really tense as well. I had resistance, and this thing was still tearing through my health. Those sonic beams also ignore armor, it seems like. Oh boy, okay, now it's getting a little too close for comfort. I'm really doubting whether I should just- Okay, no, we're mirroring back home. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. I do not want to deal with this. What? Why is this guy so strong? What is going on? I had to take a moment to just let that sink in. We had 17 hearts, killed every single boss mob in the game, got some of the best armor in the game, the best weapon, and I'm still getting absolutely destroyed. This is not good. I should have, however, taken my crystalline elytra with me. That is one of the things that I realize now I didn't have it on, so I was missing out on six free armor points. I did quickly grab some extra iron skin and regeneration, tried looking for him again, but didn't find him. So I went back home and I strategized. We needed all of the best potions possible and I started brewing. It was time to create every single concoction that I could in order to drink it and absolutely destroy him. I was making my pre-workout, I was getting my tremble on. We were going to go ham on this guy. I did, however, put the medkit in, make it splash and it became splash. Instant health too. So, that's kind of a big L, because that medkit had regeneration 5. Which could have also, well, pretty much dealt like 100 damage to him if I drank it. I could have easily stabbed him a couple times. But, anyway, I looked up the cords and we went back in. It was time to finally kill this guy. Kill the warden. I drank my iron skin, I ate my steak, and I started 
rumbling around in the skull cave because rumbling around was going to set off the alarms and there we go i was gonna engage him by first getting strength and regeneration dropping that blue bomb on him and then going to absolute town with my spear i chucked the blue bomb on his ass and it dealt heavy damage i ate another golden apple and it was my last one and i went in with the spear dealing some really heavy damage stacking that penetration debuff on him so he would have no armor to guard him his damage was not as high as before and my regeneration was doing work this was going pretty good we already had him down halfway and then he started dealing an incredible amount of damage i quickly had to splash myself with health and regeneration and then we could go back in this guy was at 44 percent we were going to make it we got him down to 130 my totem of undying didn't go off holy shit it was a two-handed weapon oh my god i didn't realize that oh, i fucked up oh my god all right so Man, that's a sour second mod pack in a row. Damn, guys, I'm really sorry. I couldn't make it. We got uh, obliterated by a sonically charged shriek. Dang. All right. Um, well, I mean, if you guys enjoyed the video, and as we did with our Alcraft, is if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll do it again. I will do this mod pack again. There's going to be new updates out by the time if it reaches 10k likes. So that way we can maybe actually get the spellbinding table to work and we can obliterate him back. Hell yeah, I like the sound of that. We are going to do the obliterating. So as always guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. It took me ages to make. So drop a comment, leave a like and subscribe, man. Only like 0.9% of my viewers are subscribed. What are you guys doing? <laughs> That's not cool. That's an L. We want W's. Alright guys, I've been your boy, Elabro. It's been a pleasure. Peace out.